to you by Mitsubishi Motors, BP Car Care, Westpac, CUB, Ultratune, Rocker Brothers and Foodland. Western Oval, Footscray versus Adelaide on AFL Live. And a very good afternoon, everyone, from the Western Oval. Round 21 of the AFL and the match this afternoon. Rather cool conditions in Melbourne between Footscray and the Adelaide Crows. Some very important matches set down for decision today. Let's take a look at the draw. And, of course, the big one being played today is at the MCG, Melbourne and Collingwood. We'll be having progress scores of all matches throughout the afternoon, by the way, and a replay of that game at the conclusion of our telecast here from Footscray. St Kilda plays Carlton at BFL Park, Essendon tackles Brisbane, and Hawthorne takes on Fitzroy. Home at the Western Oval, of course, Footscray generally plays particularly well. Last week they extended Hawthorne out at Waverley, only went down by a couple of kicks in the end, and so the form of the Bulldog hasn't been too bad. Insofar as Adelaide is concerned, well, mathematically, they can still make the top six and they would need to win here this afternoon to still keep their faint hopes of playing in the finals alive. They did fairly well last week, of course, against the West Coast Eagles and, uh, well, nearly stole the game. OK, when they last met, the scores turned out like this and it was Adelaide 19-14, 128 at Football Park, defeating Footscray 14-13-97. And a very good afternoon to Ian Robertson and Gerald here. Gentlemen. Hello, Peter. Hello, Pete. How are you? I'm very well. Yep. Uh, Footscray, Robbo, always hard to beat at home, aren't they? Well, I think it's a big ask for Adelaide, Peter, this afternoon because there's been some good sides come out here and, and uh, been rolled over. And uh, I'm talking about Carlton in Premiership years, Richmond in Premiership years, and uh, Footscray are very, very hard. The best thing that Adelaide can see today is that there's no win. Exactly. It's uh, usually a prevailing northerly here, blowing straight down the That's ground. Right. But uh, today we see no wind whatsoever. And I'm sure the people uh, in Adelaide would be most interested to know that uh, Ross Trevor won the National Schoolboys Championship. But looking at today's lineup, we see Rick Kennedy lined up against Sean Wren. But I think McIntyre might be named uh, or started full forward for Adelaide. And the half back line for Footscray, Peter Foster, who's been a terrific player for the Bulldogs over the years. He's got a fairly big job up against John Clue. And the centres, of course, it should be the battle of the handball experts with Atkins and Jarman. Don't be surprised to see McDermott uh, standing Atkins for the whole day, though. And the problem uh, for the Adelaide side will be whether they can contain the brilliance of Doug Hawkins on the forward line and young Chris Grant, I hope he plays well. Maynard, a key player for Adelaide in defence. Yes, and here we see Nigel Smart lining up against Ballantyne, who has been quite impressive in his uh, few games he's had this year. Justin Charles, well, he's uh, a living legend in the making out here at uh, the Western Oval, and he should provide us with some entertainment today. Bulldogs may miss uh, Scotty Wind in the ruck, but uh, Glenn Coleman has given them a pretty good year. Micken and McDermott McGuinness, what a great lineup that is for the Crows. Yes, and the interchange, Stanley and Stanfield for Footscray, and Bickley and McIntyre for the Crows. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Max Stevens will be joining us on the boundary and in the respective dressing rooms today. Let's go down to Max. A very good afternoon to you. Uh, a very good afternoon to you, Max, for the Mitsubishi Motors Ground Report. Thanks very much, Peter. Well, in Adelaide, we've had quite a bit of rain over the last couple of weeks, but I'm happy to say things are looking pretty good here at the Western Oval, better known to South Australian viewers as the Dog Kennel. Our current temperature is 13 degrees. The expected high, 17 degrees. Now, the wind. A slight breeze of about five kilometres. It's blowing down the ground, left of screen, but no goal advantage. And that's a little unusual on this ground. Usually blows the opposite way, according to my informant, G Healy. And the forecast, fine and mild with cool periods. Right, thank you, Max. Usually I just have trouble with the word Mitsubishi. This afternoon, no problems. We'll take a break from the Western Oval. Back with the first quarter shortly. Welcome back to the Western Oval. Bright sunshine now. Selections, gentlemen, quickly. Well, for me, I, you have to go for Footscray at the Western Oval. The Crows' first time here, and uh, it'll be a, a, a terrific effort if they could win this one. Robert, I think Footscray will win comfortably, Peter. Oh, well, I'll uh, go against the tide. I'll go for Adelaide. There you are. It is pretty hard to win out here. By the way, the centre of the ground particularly heavy. It's 
Not a real good wet weather ground, this one. No, it doesn't hold the water that well, and we just do see that McIntyre has lined up at full forward, and Sean Wren and Wiedemann are on the bench for the Crows. Ford and Stanley on the bench for Footscray. Ball out of the centre from Micken. His kick up towards half forward. He played a particularly good game last week. Foster. Foster kicks towards left half forward. Footscray can swing into attack already through Collinhook. Not the greatest of kicks down towards the 50 metre line. Chance for Ballantyne, but the hand pass came out in the direction of Coleman. Nick ricochets back. McGuinness, he'll get some stick here this afternoon against his old club. Filky gives it to him. He kicks it up towards the edge of the square. Footscray mark again. Touch number two to Foster. And he could be in for a particularly good afternoon. Although that hand pass wasn't too uh, well delivered. Murphy, gee, just about throws the ball out. Filky again. Cops one high. Could have got a free kick. The umpire says play on. Liberatore tries to tie it all up. And there is going to be a free kick. And it will be taken by Libers at centre-half back. Tony Liberatore has had a pretty good season after coming back from a serious knee injury. And the kick has been marked by Hawkins just forward of the centre. Left foot kick to half forward and a good mark taken by Grant out in front of Lee. Grant is uh, too far out to score. He'd be two kicks from goal for the Bulldogs. Short pass again. Atkins marks. They haven't gone that far further afield. Still two kicks, Robbo, really. It certainly is. Well outside 50. But Atkins gets hold of a torpedo. This may go through. Has it been touched? Yes, right on the line. A beautiful kick by Simon Atkins, got onto the torpedo and with lots of penetration, the first score of the game to the Bulldogs, it's a behind. The Williams. Crows are already making a move, Michael Murphy coming on and uh, Wayne Wiedemann on for his first run quickly in the game. Out of defence goes uh, Tasker, a high kick back into the centre, punched away from Kluke by Foster, at the bottom was McDermott, Maynard, McDermott again, handball wider, chance for Bickley, Left foot kick by that player up to half forward. Chopped off by Eppleson. He's pulled off the football there by Rowe. That oh. was nearly a throw. Let go. McDermott. Kick towards half forward. No mark taken there by Klug. In comes Kennedy. Kick off the ground by the rugged Footscray defender. And he finds touch about 35 to 40 metres around from the Adelaide goal. There's a commentator in a radio box here, three from us, who invented the flick pass. And I tell you what, it's just about back in footy. That isn't was it? a perfect one, Peter, wasn't it? That one coming out then. I'm speaking, of course, of Ted Witt, who uh, has this stand named after him. Kellett tries to get through some pretty heavy traffic. All Adelaide down there, though. McDermott to McGuinness. As I said, he'll come in for some stick here this afternoon. Oh, good mark taken by Jamison. Good use of the body. He's played a free kick. Gerard, was it? Well, there was definitely a bit of a push there, but I thought it was a little bit tough on the Adelaide player. Yes. However, the umpires are closer than we are. Baxter. Father, of course, played some good footy out here. Stanfield kicks to the centre wing position. Big Charles finally gives the hand pass out. Back to Eppleston. Eppleston's kick up towards the centre wing position. A marking contest down there. Maynard lies over the ball. Finally gets it out. Trying to get it back to McGuinness. The Footscray going forward again through Atkins. Long hand pass. Collinhook can make position. Kicks to Royal in the pocket. Slippery ball. Very difficult condition for the players. Royal tries to steer it through and has registered only one behind. I don't think he'd be too happy with that. Well, I think, Peter, you see with the, the really good sides, they put the ball into the centre of the goal from a position like that. I think Brian Royal could have done a lot better. It was an ordinary performance. A couple of quick matchups. McGuinness is being tagged one and one against by Collinhook, and Baxter's taking the dangerous jam. Tasker kicks in. Hawkins. Long kick, still 45 metres out from goal, race for the ball, socket away by Bickley. And he might just pick it up on the boundary line, he has done. Well played by the Crow, in towards Wiedemann. And he's beaten for it by Stanfield, and the ball now out of bounds. And we'll take a throw in on centre wing. Peter, that mark and play on by Dougie Hawkins just a few seconds ago is what football's all about, isn't it? He the really these supporters conditions. just absolutely adore Dougie Hawkins, and he's got so much natural ability. Play now on Adelaide's half-forward area. Foster, handball away. Chance there for Mansfield. The short pass is OK. It's marked by Hunter in the centre of the greasy Western Oval. Handball goes wide to Kellett. Kellett's kick to full forward. A big punch away by Smart. Rebounds back to the centre. Hunter's got the football. Another torpedo punt kick to the goal square. 
and a great mark taken in the finish. Back there in defence by Daryl Hart. That was a great uh, example of keeping your eyes on the ball when under pressure, going back with the flight of the ball. Hart's short pass has been marked there by Tasker. Tasker ran onto the favoured right foot, kicks it long, well out towards the wing. Atkins, Hunter, tackle McGuinness, leaves it for McDermott. McDermott has a chance, still got the chance now, Chris McDermott, and sizes up the situation, kicks it high towards half forward. Over the top of the players' heads back there, Coleman, little kick off the ground, chance for Rowe, beautifully tackled by Foster. Play goes on according to the central umpire. Foster still got the chance to clear for the Bulldogs, and he does it pretty well. Well done, Peter Foster. High kick towards centre wing. Crumbs are picked up by Atkins. Handball away to Baxter. Baxter's kicked to half forward, a little too short there for Grant. Good tackle, Maynard. Ball comes to the back. Lee there for the Adelaide Crows. The Bulldogs looking for the free kick. Here's Andrew Jarman showing courage. Handball by Micken goes to Tasker, and Tasker will clear for Adelaide. High kick to the outer side. The punch away is by Coleman. Eppleston should get there first and does. Good smother by Filkey and the ball spills free. McGuinness torpedo punchy. We've seen about three of those in the first five minutes of play. What's going on? Out of bounds. Right half forward or left half forward it is for the Adelaide Crows. Kicking to the Geelong road end. I really like the look of young Sean Tasker. Evidently he uh, started his career on a half forward flank in Adelaide but uh, he's playing the half back flank like a seasoned veteran. Kicks the ball the long way too. McPherson had his kick smothered or attempted kick. Ball finally booted away. That was by Rowe. There's a free kick. Footscray's way. I think, Peter, when you mentioned about the torpedo punt kick, certainly distances are being gained at both ends. So not much wind advantage here today. No, well, that's a relief too because on Tuesday and Wednesday it was blowing a gale here in Melbourne. Lee, Kellett. Ball comes out the back. Grant just about thrown out to Atkins again. He goes with the underground kick up towards the edge of the square. Flipped out to Tregenza. He spilt it initially, then kicks to centre wing. Jarman his target. Offloaded by Coleman. Kellett in front. Good tackle Lee. Ball free again. Baxter. Thought more players would be wearing long sleeves today. Atkins generally does. Kicks up towards centre half forward. Oh, strong mark. Great grab taken by Ballantyne. First time I've seen him. Gets play moving pretty quickly because there was a player loose down there and he's seen Kovanyuk. And Kovanyuk has marked, what do you have to say, within kicking distance, Jared? Yes, he should, uh, with a heavy ball, still will be a challenging kick for Kovanyuk, who has already uh, moved into the forward pocket. Graham, Graham Corns has uh, reacted to the tag of McGuinness by placing him on Simon Atkins, and both players already have had a number of possessions. Crows hit the score, Footscray two behinds on the board. That will add to their total. It's a goal. Footscray's first goal on the board. Klug, long hand pass with the ball now very muddy. Foster overruns it. And he'll take the hand pass from McPherson. Kicks it short to the advantage of Footscray. Coleman fumbles. He might go off the ground now. He won't. Probably should have in hindsight. Libratore. Always at the bottom of the packs. Atkins. One of his many hand passes he'll deliver today. Kevin fumbles. That ball very hard to handle. Rowe. Not a good hand pass. Well, tried to suck it off the ground again. Charles. Well, I hope he balls it up as a trip. Well, he had to give a free kick eventually, Robert. Yes, well, I think that was on the cards, but uh, there were probably two or three before that. I thought Dougie Hawkins could have nearly got a free kick. But the umpire saw fit to uh, allow the play to go on and eventually giving it to Charles. Charles kick. Grant. Severe hand pass. Hawkins gathered it nicely. Gives it out wide to McPherson. With strength, McPherson gets clear, kicks it up to the goal front, and the youngster there for Footscray, John Ballantyne, has given away a free kick. Is he just and allowing himself to come down to the ground a little bit? He should stay at home in that square. Taken by Smart, he kicked it wide to McGuinness. McGuinness's high kick towards centre wing. Adelaide Mark taken out there by Rowe, and it's been paid, although he may have been a little fortunate in the finish, but he has the football on centre wing. Short pass is pretty good, Mark to Klug. Klug's hand pass, Maynard who loves to run up to the half forward line to have shots at goal, he's kicked towards full forward and what a good mark taken by Rick Kennedy at full back hand pass is wide, McPherson has the football and gets round short kick into centre half back, little risky, Kellett uses the body well and then gathers it beautifully handball over the top, Atkins who's probably had 10 possessions already in the game Coleman goes back to Kellett Kellett's long penetrating kick to the forward pocket and a great mark taken 
by Valentine. He plays on, shoots for goal, and that'll bring the Footscray crowd to their feet. Brilliant football, Johnny Valentine. Well, a stamp of a veteran there, the way he did that, Gerard. Good mark, played on and drilled it. Yes, and uh, about five seconds ago I said he should have stayed back in the square. Well, if you can mark and kick like that, Robbo, why not come out and take the lead? Looking on the on the replay here, we see a marvellous mark with a greasy ball, and that's a magnificent kick considering the conditions. And confident too, wasn't it? Terrific yes, stuff the, uh, by a young player. Fantastic. Footscray second, and I do say that will be one of the goals of the day, kicked by John Valentine after that mark and run. The ball pretty heavy now, and it's uh, just come back from the crowd. He kicked that a good 55 metres, and that's a splendid effort with the wet and greasy ball. So 2-2. Two -two. Goals for Footscray coming from Collinhook, a little bit closer in, and that one from John Ballantyne. We mentioned Footscray always hard out here at the Western Oval. Is Bickley tagging Liberatore? He is, he certainly is. And we see Mark Hunter, he's picking up Chris McDermott. 2-2 two -two to Footscray now after that goal. McDermott, a high kick, will just clear the square. Marking contest, Jarman loses out. Hand pass comes out to Tregenza. And Clue marking about 35 metres in front. Actually, that part of the ground looks a lot better than it does down here, doesn't it? Well, it's a bit misleading. I think uh, I've driven past the ground a couple of times during the week and uh, we've had reasonable weather for Melbourne in uh, August. And I thought the ground looked good, but obviously it's a bit deceiving from here, Peter. So Clue for Adelaide's first goal will be accurate. And one behind only. So the first score to the Crows coming up with 14 and a half minutes left in the term. Wade Wiedemann's been taken from the ground and he's been replaced by Michael Murphy. Mark taken at half back by Mansfield. Youngster from Tasmania kicks to centre wing. Colin, you've got two hands to the ball, couldn't take the mark. And it was punched over by Lee. So boundary throw in close to centre wing. Colin York uh, scoring the first goal today. It's going to be Mark Micken against Coleman. Micken best on the ground in the Crows losing effort against the West Coast Eagles last week. McDermott, Stanfield, McGuinness, quick left footer up towards the 50 metre line. Rod right, Jamison over the top might have been fringed and the free kick will be taken by Mansfield. Mansfield is uh, between the back pocket and half back flank. Nice left foot kick, punched away, ball comes back to Atkins, lovely hand pass, Callum, too heavy there, hand, hand pass further afield by Stanfield, he may get it back, no he loses it for the more experienced Atkins, Atkins left foot kick to full forward, Valentine, he's got it, no, it hasn't been paid, Crows under pressure on the full back line, kick goes wide, chance now for Eppleston, player in support is Hunter, hand pass too severe behind Hunter, Hunter with the left foot. Kicks it towards full forward. No mark taken. Ball rebounds. Chance for Valentine. He goes in after it again. Grant in there. Tasker under pressure. Micken tries to flip it out. In goes Maynard. Still a struggle for possession by all Ooh. players. A bit of heavy stuff in there. Valentine. Still rugby tackle. Rugby style football. Charles. Dives on it. Thumps it back. It's still in there. Surely the umpire's got to bounce the ball. And the cheers of the crowd. And well, I think not it was good umpire, Robert. It really was terrible, wasn't it, Jared? Because Crow's somebody's going to get hurt. Exactly. Yes, somebody the did. Boots are going in willy-nilly and uh, indiscriminate kicking. Somebody will get hurt, as we've seen on the screen. Chance now for the Crows. Picked up by Pays. And he's gone to the boundary line. And that player in question was Tasker. Still in the hands of the trainers. And I think he might have got uh, a boot amidships in all that. Mickett and Charles, McDermott, kicks up towards centre wing. And the Crows need to get a couple of goals quickly. Foster, let's break it away, it's going to be pretty hard to stop. Foster's kicked to half forward, doesn't get too much distance. Grant to Atkins. Atkins already with a number of possessions against his name, and they could do well here. Hunter, left footer into the goal square, and off the hands of the pack and through for only one behind. Yes, well, I'm a little bit amazed at uh, this move by Graham Corn. Simon Atkins is the architect of all Footscray's wins and uh, his hands are so creative that I don't believe you can allow a player like McGuinness to tag him because he, McGuinness isn't that defensive and already we see Atkins with many, many possessions. Tasker kicks in. Grant was the flyer. Couldn't come down with the ball. Smart. 
He took mark of the day last week against the West Coast Eagles. Long kick up towards the 50 metre line. Jamison makes good position, or not the best of hand passes. Back it comes to Filkey. Still inside the square, long kick needed. And that's what he goes for. It's all Footscray down there, and Rick Kennedy takes his second mark of the quarter. And Rick Kennedy already making his presence felt. Hand passes away to McPherson. McPherson's kick wide to the wing. Jarman tackled, taken away by Eppleston. He may have the job on Andrew Jarman during tagging. Has he, Greg Eppleston, maybe? No, Baxter's got Jarman. Baxter. Ball at half forward now for Footscray. Free kick has been given to Pays against young Chris Grant there. And Pays will relieve for Adelaide. Getting back to that business about Jarman, uh, sorry, Atkins, I think McDermott's the man for uh, Atkins. Similar speed and also a player can get in and under the ball. And he's been doing that role in the last few weeks. Well, we might see some changes in the uh, positions on the field shortly, but uh, Adelaide under pressure early in the game here in the first quarter. Footscray have done pretty well. They've kicked 2-3. And Adelaide going forward just the once for a behind to John Kluge. The ball at half back. Ruck contest. No one can come clear. The umpire has picked a free kick out of that. And it's going to be taken back there by Tony McGuinness. The umpires this afternoon are Jeff Caulfield and Shane Harris. And McGuinness, with 10 minutes left in the term, has the ball at half back. And he'll kick it over the wing for the Crows. No one can take the mark. Kluge. Tackled by Mansfield. The ball comes out the back to Hunter. Who gets ridden into the ground. Could get a free kick. Footscray fans asking for it. And he's going to come up with it. There probably should be more free kicks given on a day like today, I think. Just to clear the clear well, the packs a bit more. We had a perfect example, didn't we, Robbo, of that before, that big pack. Hawkins up. Couldn't take the mark. Liberatore tries some soccer tactics. Atkins, again, the underground hand pass. 25 metres shovel vision. on this time. Colin Yook, could he make it two? Not with that kick. Crows try to hold it up in the goal square. Ballantyne looking for a free kick, holding the ball. Comes out with it. Good hand pass. Snapshot by Stanfield. Looks good and gets it. Oh, no, he's touched it. One behind only, but a great effort. And Ballantyne, only a youngster, excellent hand pass. 2-4, that'll be out of bounds without being touched. Lee just couldn't make the ground, so a Footscray free kick. Not panic stations, but the pressure certainly on the Crows down there at the moment. Yes, well, both Ballantyne and Chris Grant are really creating some headaches for the Crows, and uh, they're going to have to do some uh, serious thinking about the structure of their side by quarter time if they're going to get back into this game. Colin Yook goes in short. Hawkins, oh lovely ball. Will this be a goal? Too short. And it's Rowe. Then we'll do the tidying up work for Adelaide. He goes to the outer side. I think he might have kicked that out of bounds in the full too. Well, I wonder if Doug Hawkins has got a problem with his uh, right foot because it was amazing to see him balk onto his left foot because he was on his preferred side that would have been his right foot now Eppleson took the kick but it's coming back again now, I agree with you Jared. I think that uh, Dougie Hawkins did everything right to get himself in a position to kick to right kick footed it, and it, it, like it was his, to his advantage on this side of the ground exactly Charles is taking the kick now too far out to score centering kick Hawkins was the target got a couple of hands to it couldn't drag it down Rowe gets it back to Micken over to Tasker and the Crows get clear. Tasker's left foot kick will be marked out there by Coleman. And Coleman, who has played pretty well for Footscray since uh, crossing from the Swans, kick in towards the forward pocket. It's a mark to Adelaide. And it might be Daryl Hart. It is back there in the back pocket. No one really to kick it to. Now there is a short pass in towards centre half back. It's been marked by Lee. Lee's kick back in towards the centre. Jarman, well done Andrew Jarman rides the bump now he'll play on, onto this near side half forward flank, kick looking there for Jamison, he can't quite take the mark, Trigenza gets his foot to the ball, it's broken down there by Mansfield chance for Kennedy, strong as Rick and he handballs it away picked up by Callan who's done pretty well on this wing, Mark nearly to Charles ball chipped off there by Rowe, and Rowe handball, Jarman Pretty quick, McDermott. Further still to Lee. Oh, Bickley drops what he probably should have taken. Liberatore may turn it into an attack for Footscray. Coleman takes the hand pass. Torpedo punt kick to full forward. Bulldogs have the Crows on the run. Royal gathers, shrugs the tackle. Brian Royal 
and he has missed again from a very acute angle. Not many options there, though, Gerard, were there? No, I think you can't be too critical of Brian Rule there. In fact, he did look to the centre of the ground. I'm sure the message came out after his first indiscretion. Uh, definitely looked and was left with no other option but to uh, have a shot, although I thought he could have run in a bit. And again, when he perhaps could have kicked with the right foot, mm. kicked with the left, which made it that little bit more difficult. Now, uh, Tasker will kick the ball back in for Adelaide. Good kick. Certainly one of the best in the side. Coleman punches clear. Now, uh, pays his hand pass. Jarman. Tregenza. Underneath it, he's right back pocket. Before Adelaide came into the competition, he was actually signed by Footscray, Simon Tregenza. Foster punches the ball down. Baxter, good tackle, Bickley. A slap on. And it rebounds over the boundary line just before Kellett can get there next to the interchange area. And another boundary throw into follow. Six minutes left in the first quarter. Footscray leading 2-5 to one behind. Charles, Hunter, intended for Liberatore, but Atkins is just as good. Eppleston streaming downfield. Filky won't catch him. Long kick. Could almost be a score. Ball slapped to the boundary line, past Ballantyne. Smart has it knocked away from him. And the Crows will get out of danger through Filky. Atkins punches clear. McGuinness or McDermott onto Tasker. Kicks to centre wing. Still they can't come down with it. McGuinness this time. Not a good kick. He knows this ground pretty well, of course. Oh, Stanfield got shirt fronted. Jarman. Peter uh, Graham Corns has made the uh, made the move, and uh, Jared Healy maybe uh, coaching might be your forte. Chris McDermott is on Simon Atkins. Oh well, the on stood out a bit, Robber. Coleman's kick up to Grant couldn't take the mark. But I'll take the rap anyway. <laughs> Long hand pass to Lee and turn to McDermott, who has it smothered. Footscray pressuring all the time. Yes, their defensive work, Footscray has been pretty good. There was a little bit of a mess up between Eppleston and Hawkins allows Adelaide to get up towards their half forward line, no mark taken back there, Rowe may have been held just a little ticky touch what I felt, but umpire Caulfield has awarded a free kick to the Adelaide player Klug takes the hand pass, kicks it towards the forward pocket area and a good mark taken by Hunter but that in was front a, of McGuinness that handball achieved nothing Robert, just put Klug under pressure on his wrong foot Kennedy clears for Footscray, back towards centre wing, kick off the ground by Baxter's no nonsense stuff Hawkins leaves it. Good blind. Colin Uke, magnificent. Atkins tries the torpedo punt kick. Doesn't quite come off. Royal maybe off the ground. No. Good defensive work by Adelaide. Chance there for Valentine, was it? And he's kicked another goal for the Dogs. 3-5 to one behind. Valentine gets his second off the ground. Kellett makes good use or good body position. Oh, yes, strong mark. You have to pay that to Jamison. Mutt was spattered, still inside the square. The Crows looking for their first goal. He's kicked down to Murphy and McIntyre. That's the latter to come out with it. Centering kick by McIntyre. And a good strong mark in front has been taken down there by Mansfield. Tasmanian, Bulldogs expecting a lot from him. And he's covered that position well so far. Back to Libratore. Kicks to centre wing, not a well-directed kick. Tell it again. He's gathering plenty of possessions out there on the wing. Nearly run down. Not a well-directed kick. Smart. Charles. Micken. Slaps the ball to the back. Collignac went past without it. Lee. Offloaded by the big Ruckman. Back it comes to Kellett again. So he's getting a million possessions down there. Ballantyne loping after it. Leaves it for Hawkins. Who gave him the hand pass. Couldn't take it. Gets one in the back for his trouble. The umpire says play on. Jarman will do just that. Taking the hand pass from Filkey. Hart, Clue, almost in the glue pot, goes across the ground, he spotted Maynard, and Maynard was very nearly off. Tregenza making good position at half forward, and he takes the mark, probably two kicks from goal. Short pass in towards centre half forward, mark taken by Bickley, coloured a little late, Bickley's kicked towards full forward, nearly an Adelaide mark up there to McIntyre, McGuinness on the bottom, McIntyre striving to get the ball out, comes out towards centre half back, and Footscray defending drastically in their Liberatore. Gee whiz, you never ever doubt that little man's courage. And what's happened here? Murphy's had his number taken, that's what. 
I'll tell you what, he wants to be careful who he's having a go at. That Steve <laughs> McPherson doesn't mind a little bit of a dust-up. <laughs> and he might have just taken note of the number on the jumper of that player. Murphy's just got back from the holiday too. Yes, against Carlton, I think it was, that he was reported and suspended. Coleman, half-back, kicked towards centre wing. Gathered by Colinuke, not bad. And well done, Steve Colinuke. Give the hand pass away, he does. Back he goes to Stanfield. Stanfield, Mansfield rather. His kick is towards centre wing and it's marked by Micken. Stanfield, Mansfield. Gee whiz. Glad one's a left footer and the other one's up the other end of the ground. Here's Liberatore. Still in the action. Handball Foster. Away to Charles. Footscroll gets something out of this. Baxter, Atkins. He'll go for a long bomb again. It may bounce close to the line anyway. And getting back is pays, but it goes through for a behind to the Bulldogs. So maybe with uh, just a little bit more luck at their goal shooting, they could have had a much better lead. They lead at the moment by 23 points. So just over a minute left in the first term. Tasker to kick the ball in. There's going to be a goal, this one it would appear for Adelaide. Their first trip to the Western Oval. But as we mentioned in our pre-match comments, it's been a graveyard for many a top side for a long, long time. However, early days yet. Micken has the ball punch clear. McDermott to McGinnis. Gee, they combine well. Off the edge of the square. Nobody can come down with the ball. Foster on the bottom of it. Rowe. Jarman. Klug. Fumbles. Over the head of Baxter. Onto Rowe. You'll have to be quick through some pretty heavy traffic. It's Footscray's defence manning up pretty well. Kennedy will go for the boundary line, will he? Not too keen, really, to keep it in play. I think Eppleston concurred with that position and it will be a boundary throw in 50 metres from Adelaide's goal. 40 seconds left in the term. McIntyre and Coleman. One by Coleman. Good tackle applied by Hunter. Rowe again looks for the hand pass. Again, Footscray manning up particularly well. Eppleston, good long clearing kick. Smart. And he takes the mark, and we'll put the Crows back into attack again. And I suppose that'd be half a chance to score. There's a free kick go wide of centre-half forward, going to Adelaide. Just seconds left. They'll have to be quick. It's Klug. And the umpire just asking the Footscray player to come back a little bit on the mark. Klug's kicked towards full forward. Punched away. McPherson in the back pocket. Has the football and gets through too easily. I don't think Graham Corns would be pleased with that, Jared. There's a mark taken at half forward for the Adelaide side by McDermott but the siren has sounded to end the first term and it's been a good one for the Bulldogs. They've kicked 3-6-24 and they lead Adelaide who have kicked one behind. And welcome back to the Western Oval. 23 points the difference in favour of Footscray at quarter time. Two to Ballantyne and one to Colin. The goal kickers for the Bulldogs. So the Crows have the job ahead of them in the second quarter. And there is a man that is very familiar to football. He's not looking this way, but that is all of him. Ryan the Whale Roberts, formerly of uh, South Melbourne and formerly of um, Richmond. That's Bertie Johnson with him too, I think. He used to play with North. With North Melbourne, I think you're right. Right, let's take a look at quarter time scores from the other games being played today. And St Kilda and Carlton, Tony Lockett, three goals out of the St Tally of 5-8 at VFL Park. They don't usually play that well out there. Essendon 6-5, the Bears 3-3. And Hawthorne doing it easily from Fitzroy. A reminder, a replay of Melbourne and Collingwood after this match. Let's go to Max Stevens. Thanks very much, Peter. Well, Graham Corns ropeable at quarter time. He grabbed uh, Murphy, McIntyre and um, Jamison, pulled them aside and gave them possibly the biggest rev I've seen him give anyone this season. Very disappointed for the fact that Adelaide this season continually start very poorly and have to, for the whole game, play catch-up football. Right, thank you, Max. And players taking up their positions now for the start of the second quarter. Yes, I'm not surprised that Corns did rev into a few because it uh, appears to me that the Crows lack a little bit of intensity. Possibly they've uh, backed off a little bit with uh, no hope of making the final six. Lost a bit of momentum there, but uh, they're going to have to lift their game in that area if they're going to be competitive. 23 points the difference as we start the second quarter. Coleman taps down to Atkins, a combination working very successfully for Footscray. Lee up in front, couldn't take the mark. Kolonyuk on the end of a hand pass. And his shot is off target and through for only one behind. He kicked the first goal, so he's also got the first score of the second quarter. 
Well, I guess to be fair to the uh, Crows, you would say that there's possibly a one-goal advantage to the uh, end at which they're kicking now. Bickley has the ball punched clear. At Libra Torre on the bottom of the pack. Then again, isn't he always? Smart hand pass to Lee. Effective. Back up towards midfield. Clue couldn't mark. Tregenza picks up the crumbs well and kicks towards half forward. And Jamison takes a good mark after being given a rev at quarter time. Clue kicks into Mansfield. Back to Jamison who was, I think, surprised as anyone. Uh, Crow's mark, and within kicking distance, McIntyre. And two of the guys that Graham Corns had a go at at quarter time, figuring there, Jamison, and this fellow who's taken the mark, Peter McIntyre. So, maybe just a little bit of a breeze behind him. Can he get the Crow's first goal? From 40 metres out, and the goal umpire moves across and says only one behind, so not yet. Well, they're two behinds have both been from fairly easy shots. Klug at the uh, right-hand end in the first quarter missed from about 35 metres out. And McIntyre really should have kicked that. The kick-in goes in the direction of Baxter. Gets past Jamison and gives the handball away to Kellett. Kellett, who's done exceptionally well so far in the game. Nice kick by that player. Back towards centre wing. No mark taken. Ball comes to the back. Pays. Handball's away to Tasker. Tasker gets past his opponent nicely with a sidestep and kicks it high towards half-forward. Adelaide Mark is taken there by Jamison and he certainly looks as though he's lifted his work rate, Rod Jamison. Kicks towards centre half forward. No one there. The ball bounces free. Chance there for McIntyre. In goes Jarman. Footscray player Eppleston. Now the ball comes out from uh, Bickley to Jarman to McGuinness. Back to Jarman with skill. Forced to kick with the left foot though. Kicks it high. In towards full forward. And Mark taken back there for Footscray by Matthew Mansfield. Well, last week the Crows had 200 handballs and we were very critical of them because we thought they over handballed and I think once again they're falling for the same trap in conditions like this the long kick is what's required Stanfield goes short Charles got down pretty well for the big fellow thought about giving it to Baxter does on the second attempt Baxter from right centre wing to the 50 metre line knocked away by Smart Royal on the bottom of it Hart or just about threw it out the mick and the crowd thought a free kick might have been forthcoming the umpires didn't Jarman Atkins can't tie it up and Liberatore again last to get up a little stiff there Tony Liberatore he had the chance to maybe gather the ball and run and get clear of the pack and nearly have a shot for goal good comeback after a knee injury Micken taps down Tregenza at right half back flank high kick two Footscray players are there Coleman thought about the hand pass to Mansfield Coleman with a little toe poke and McGuinness will get a free kick it must be a lot more difficult at ground level out there than what we expect from here Peter the players are having lots of trouble handling the football well looking at the ground through the glass of Robbo it's very very heavy in many parts of the oval Rowe nearly gets ridden in the ground. Libra Torre's hand pass was effective. Eppleston kicks the centre wing. Colin got a lead and marks in front of Lee. He needs to get it moving quickly if he can. Not too many options. Now he's found a loose player. Back it comes to Steve McPherson. Smart late on the scene. Punches clear. Hayes, high kick to the edge of the square, McPherson again, a short kick to the centre wing position where it's very heavy, Kolonyuk taps the ball out wide, a little bit too wide for the player going past, and it's going to be a boundary throw in, right on the centre wing position. Rucks go at it. Guinness infringed, could have been in the back. He comes out with the ball. A short kick into the glue pot in the centre. Clue picks it up, flips the ball over the head of Baxter. Libra Torres there, flips it back into the mud. Coleman, oh, sidestep. Back it comes to Micken, though, and Micken kicks high from a standing start to no one in particular. And Eppleston has taken the mark. Eppleston's got Coleman about 35 metres closer to goal. He marks. Good shepherd by Charles. Coleman's long kick towards half forward. And a Footscray mark nearly taken by Grant. Tasker, well tackled by Grant. Picked up by Royal. 
kick to the goal front. Nearly the Footscray mark to Ballantyne. He recovers. Shot for goal is wide. And it's out of bounds on the full and the youngster. Full forward for Footscray. A bit disappointed with his effort there. Gathered the ball nicely. And missed badly in the finish. Yes, well, I think that uh, Glenn Coleman is showing far too much mobility for Micken here. And uh, I believe that's his best position. He's giving the Bulldogs a little bit of drive. And there's Darren Baxter who was uh, having a pretty good battle with Jarman in the middle. Good mark there by Baxter. Crows have made another change. Uh, Rowe is off and Wiedemann is on. Crows get the ball towards half forward. Good mark to McPherson. He's found his niche back there in defence for Footscray with plenty of skill. He kicks with the left foot and Coleman marks just forward of centre wing quite near the Adelaide Crows race. And he gets back quickly. Kicks the torpedo punt kick about 45 metres towards the Footscray goal. Punched away. Atkins has it. Handball over the top. Colin Newt tries to kick it to his own advantage. Maynard and McDermott combine. Ball goes wider. Hart onto Pays. Pays his long kick. Wide to the wing. Footscray have got the numbers. Three. Hunter comes in to help out. Tell it. The tap to Hunter's advantage was just a little bit too far. The kick goes back. Klug picks it up and kicks it towards half forward. Overrunning it was McIntyre. Backing up beautifully for Footscray there is Mansfield. And the short pass is not bad. He finds Eppleston. Nearly takes the mark. Tackled by Filkey is all right. And Eppleston will be free kick. And the Footscray fans haven't got anything to complain about because there was no way known that the Footscray player made an attempt to move the ball on. Filkey kicks it in towards the forward pocket. Adelaide Mark coming up. Certainly the man in front, Murphy. It's not paid. So I think well, Queen I of McIntyre, mate, I think McIntyre had the second grab, but uh, that may be the reason he didn't get the mark. We'll just see here on replay. Certainly Murphy takes the... Well, at the back there, you yeah. see McIntyre took the first bite at it. Murphy came down. So good decision, Robert. Ball up. Murphy fighting hard at uh, ground level, but... Uh, finding it very difficult to get the ball out into the open and the umpire will call for another ball up. I thought it was interesting before we saw Trigenza sprinting down the wing with Hunter. I knew Trigenza was a pacey player but uh, Hunter showed surprising speed to keep up with him. It could have nearly been a free kick to Mansfield but the uh, umpire has called for a boundary throw in. So left forward pocket for Adelaide. They've got a chance to get their first goal. 17 and a half minutes left in the half. Klug up in front. Tries to take the ball and kick as well. Liber Torres kick smothered and the ball out in front of Liber and also Jamison. And Corns has made another change Wayne Wiedemann who's supposedly one of the toughest players in South Australia has been moved on to Simon Atkins. Big task big ask no one going anywhere there another ball up the low scoring game this Ian Robertson in his pre-match forecast said Footscray would kick 16-14 not looking too good, Robbo, at the moment. Oh, thanks for reminding me of that. <laughs> oh, the boys are getting a bit excited here. A little bit frustrated down there. Given Adelaide a free kick out of this, I think. McPherson and Murphy. No love lost between that pair. They were involved in an incident in the first quarter in which Murphy had his number taken. Just see the umpire there. He's getting into a shouting argument with these players. There's no point in yelling at players... In the heat of the moment, just pay your decision and uh, get on with the game. So it might be Adelaide's first goal. Well, Murphy's been involved with a little bit of shouting. He's had uh, corns a quarter time, the umpire then, and a few other players. So let's hope he can uh, cap it off with a goal. And the crowd now. He's hooked it. You don't even have to wait for the goal umpire's decision to know what it was. And only one behind. So the Crows still goal is three behinds to 3-7, but they're not out of this match yet by any stretch of the imagination. Very low-scoring affair. Goals at Footscray and wet weather often hard to come by. Eppleston marks the kick in in front of Grantley Filkey. Eppleston from right back pocket. Up towards the centre wing position. Off the hands of the pack. Chance for Pays. Gives it over to Clue, who kicks from a standing start. Only gets about 35 metres with the kick. It's all Footscray and Hunter takes it. Just looking at some scores, Adelaide, when they played Collingwood in round 15 up at Collingwood, could only kick five goals, three, and it was similar conditions to this. So they really are finding it hard on these wet, muddy, dirty Melbourne football grounds. Free kick from the centre, Grant, hand pass away. McPherson's long kick towards half forward, and well done. 
That's a great Scott mark. Lee going back with the flight of the ball. Marks and handballs away to Smart. Smart's kick close to the boundary line. Well played, Greg Eppleston. Away to Atkins. Goes back to Eppleston. He's going to get run down, but good shepherding there by Colin Uke. But the kick is uh, chopped off nicely by Smart. Handball back is very severe for the lumbering Micken. Royals got him. Handball's away. Maynard under pressure. The Crows get out of trouble. Smart's long kick goes back towards centre half back, but Mark in the Footscray jumper by Glenn Coleman. He plays on quickly. Long kick by Coleman towards full forward. No mark taken. Ballantyne there tries to kick it off the ground. Under pressure back there is Pays. Handball wide goes to Bickley. Good tackle, Liberatore. Not quite effective enough, though. Bickley's kick across his left shoulder, and it's marked at half-back by Tregenza. It's been a good battle between uh, the Brownlow medalist and uh, Fiocchi. Kick by Tregenza has been marked by Klug, and he's had to come a long, long way down the ground to get kicks. Johnny Klug, he's kicking the ball from centre-half back. Well blocked by Atkins, but he lost the football. Wiedemann with strength. McDermott goes further back. Klug, not bad vision. Kicks it to the advantage of Tregenza. Off the ground, but the ball may have been over the line. And we will have a boundary throw in. Simon Tregenza, a dasher for the Adelaide Crows, but uh, finding it difficult on the greasy Western Oval surface. Just like to correct myself there, of course, that's Mark Bickley that's picking up Tony Liberatore. Micken, the German. It might be out of bounds on the full. In fact, the boundary umpire says it is. It indicates where the free kick is going to be taken. I don't think Kellett yeah, realised well, it was interesting because uh, today's footballers really should be very, very aware of those things. And Kellett not concentrating there. Micken in front. Charles in the middle. Knock on by Clue. Kellett again. Good tackle, Jarman. Tunnelled out by Atkins. Tregenza at the bottom of the pack. Wiedemann. Now, I hope he balls it up a little bit quicker here. Yes. They are letting it go, though, Peter. They must have swallowed their whistle at times. It would appear so. I guess games like this are pretty hard to umpire, though, Gerard, under these conditions. Jarman again. Over to Pays. Back to McGuinness. High kick by Tony McGuinness to the edge of the square. Klug at the back with Coleman, the two number 20s. The Footscray's running game today much better than their opponents. Hawkins, Hunter. And plenty of time. Good shepherd by Mansfield, which gave him that time. Bought him a couple of seconds. Charles, late on the scene, taps down. Might be an Adelaide free kick out of this. Maynard comes out with it. I don't think it's going to be his ball. It's not. It's going to be taken by uh, Bickley, it is. Certainly held when he didn't have the football. McDermott. Murphy in front. He's played the mark. Yes, I thought it was Foster. a good effort by Peter Foster. The Bulldogs defence doing a magnificent job at the moment. This is Wiedemann. It's pushed over by Atkins. In fact, that's what the umpire has said. A push in the back and Wiedemann will take the free kick. Very poor play there by Atkins. Kick by Wiedemann to half forward. What happened to Darren Baxter? Waited for the ball. Jarman, handball out. Adelaide got a chance here through McIntyre. McIntyre's kick to the square and it bounces just to the right hand side of the big goal post there and through for another behind. So they've kicked what four behinds now and Footscray have kicked three seven. One behind in this quarter to Footscray and three behinds to Adelaide and we've only got 11 and a half minutes left in the uh, quarter. So it's been a very, very ordinary quarter of football. The kick in has been marked there by Stanfield. Barry Stanfield from uh, Fish Creek, I think he was recruited from. The kick in the uh, direction of Grant. Now chance for Liberatore. Eppleston somehow gets through and kicks it high towards half forward. Coming out in front and a good mark nearly taken there by Ballantyne. He goes after it again. Geez, positive this young bloke. Charles can't break his way through. Ballantyne still in there trying hard. Charles gets the football, gets his footing and kicks the Bulldogs into the pocket where Colin Uke takes a good mark under a little bit of pressure, but it was a fairly good effort in the finish by Steve Collinu. Well, Footscray have got Ballantyne at full forward and Chris Grant at centre half forward. Two young blokes, 21 years or younger, are certainly shaping as a positive signs for Footscray in the next decade. They've got plenty to uh, look forward to. Colin Uke kicks from the pocket and he misses with a check side. 
Steve Colin Ucas kicked one goal, two in that Footscray scoreline. Not too happy. And neither is that man there with his assistants, Graham Corns, in the coach's box out on the uh, on the far wing here at Footscray. Nearly a mark to Eppleston from the kick in. Picked up by Bickley. Ball short kick has been marked by Maynard. Maynard to Wiedemann. Wiedemann streaming down centre field. Looks for the hand pass. McDermott gives it back to him. Need to get some footing there to kick well. He did a good job in the end. Jamison traps it nicely. Oh, it legged onto Murphy. Could have been a free kick. The advantage was certainly paid. Is that their first goal? It looks okay. The goal umpire says yes. 3-8 to 1-4. So finally Adelaide breaks the ice. 26 plays 10. And Wren warming up on the boundary line. There's the umpire. Starts us off again. Hart. So maybe that will encourage the Crows to better things down towards half forward. Ball slapped out in front of the pack to Stanfield. It's a little toe poke by Kennedy. Hunter. Coleman. Should have gone a bit harder than that, Peter. Crowd looking for holding the ball. That uh, won't happen, I don't think. No. He doesn't look anywhere near as sure of himself, Glenn Coleman, in these conditions as maybe in the dryer. When the ball's below his shins, he uh, comes well and truly back to the field. Former teammate speaking, Wiedemann. Just about throws it out to Hart. Shoveled out to Atkins in front. Good hip and shoulder put him out of business. That came from McGuinness. Umpire says free kick. Deliberate. Oh, oh, oh. I think that one was uh, oh. attributed to the members standing. Well, the great. supporters, didn't he then? Atkins to take the free. Atkins at half back. Not a bad kick by Simon Atkins to the wing. Hawkins should have marked that. Charles in after it. And McDermott there for Adelaide. But the umpire calls for a ball up. Just getting back to Glenn Coleman. We always thought that his best position was in the ruck. He's fantastic at picking up possessions, but his big problem is in the in the duel, in the actual ruck duels, particularly on boundary lines. Wren has come on for Adelaide. Murphy is off again. He'll be uh, wondering which way to go. Michael Murphy's been on and off that interchange bench in the first half about six times already. Coming clear from defence for Footscray was Stanfield. Gets it away to Mansfield. Mansfield's kicking towards the centre, and a good mark taken by Grant. I'll tell you what, uh, I like the look of him. Coming back from a bad illness, Hunter takes the hand pass, kicks it to the wing, forward of the wing, Liberatore marks on his chest. Fellow Rover Colinuke doing the leading. Liberatore waiting a little bit too long, now he's asked to play on. He kicks it in the Ballantyne direction, he's from behind, and the mark is taken from in front by Nigel Smart, where all good defenders it should be. The ball's going to drop short in these conditions. Handball away to Lee. Lee goes one way, then the other and kicks it wide to half-back. Footscray mark taken out there by Cullen. He plays on, handball in towards the centre-half forward position. Coleman, a kick falls short. And a mark is taken by the player who's just come onto the ground in Sean Wren. Likely type is Wren. Hand pass wide to Tasker. Tasker runs outside the 50-metre line and kicks it long towards the wing. It goes over the wing. The drop punt kick is not bad. Punched away by Mansfield. Coleman in there. Kick off the ground comes from Tregenza. Desperate stuff there by Matthew Mansfield. And he takes the ball over at halfback for Footscray. Boundary throw in. Seven and a half minutes left in the second term. Only one goal scored in this term so far. And that has come for Adelaide. Kicked by Michael Murphy. Stanley coming on to replace Colignuk. It's on this side of the ground. Play continues on the other. McDermott kicks to within 40 metres of goal. Two Footscray players are there. Kennedy tries to charge his way through, comes out with a footy, looks for Mansfield. Tackled well by Hart, Cavett again, gives it back to Coleman, tackled by McIntyre. McDermott kicks from a standing start to the 50 metre line and Steve McPherson and or his teammate down there in uh, Eppleson, they both could have had that. McPherson got it to Baxter. Out of the former Footscray gate, uh, great in uh, Ray Baxter. And boundary throw at this time on centre wing. Member stand side as Chris Grant dusts himself down. Or well, Darren Baxter's uh, doing a fair job on Jarman at the present time. He's keeping him out of the game and uh, picking up possessions himself. Charles in front from Maynard. Liberatore. That was a throw. Had to be a throw. Uh, Free I, think he, I think the umpire used a little bit of uh, initiative there, Jared. He was on the defensive side, but certainly I'm with you. Tony Liberatore could do nothing else but. And the free kick will go to Bickley. Bickley at left centre wing for the Adelaide Crows. Foster in front with Clue. Jamison tries to paddle it through the legs of Hunter. Now Hunter comes back with the football. 
Wren rides him into the ground and he will take the free kick at centre half back on it goes to Baxter plenty of run in those legs and a good uh, kick and pass to Grant Kellett again gives it back to that same player Baxter moving well downfield he can kick a goal if he keeps going one touch on the ground right on 50 let's fly with a long kick and a mark is there Valentine I'll tell you what Peter John Valentine might kick this goal but it was fantastic running by Darren Baxter to set it up Michael Ford's come onto the ground to replace Glenn Colm there's having a bit of a rest he has been covering a lot of territory but on the replay we see there was a great mark and uh, Good bit of team play from Footscray. And the end result to Foster to uh, Hawkins for one point. Well, there must have been a free kick in that because Ballantyne certainly took the mark, but yeah. Hawkins took the kick, so maybe the umpire saw an infringement against the Adelaide defender. Coleman and Conyuk on the bench. Five and a half minutes left before half time, and Tasker will kick in 17 points the difference. And he decides to go straight up the ground, which is not bad uh, tactics on a day like today. Here's the youngster, Stanley. Gets the handball wide to Callot. Chopped off by McDermott. Liberatore a little late on the scene. Nearly a mark there to Jamison. Strong in defence was Foster, but he couldn't do anything about it. His opponent, Clue, gathers the awkward ball, and the pass is OK to McIntyre. McIntyre's kick into the woods of forward pocket. It's been marked by Jamison. He could have nearly played on, but he's assisted reasonably well and decided to go back and have a shot at goal. Just get the feeling that the Crows are starting to mount something here, Robert. Going to get back into this game. I think in, in no small part due to Wiedemann, who uh, really has cut out Atkins in the last 10 minutes or so. Well, I suppose Footscray just haven't got the score on the board, have they? They've, they've had 12 shots at goal to kick 3-9. And with low scores, it doesn't take much for the team from behind to get back into the game. And a lovely kick by Jamison is a goal. Warning! Warning! Aliens approaching! Warning! <laughs> The out-of-this-world star wagon from Mitsubishi. If you use a twin blade shaver like me, you'll love Bix Twin Blade. It's a great shaver, and it shaves around half the price off the leading twin. Nice one, Bic. A twin blade that's around half the price of... you know who. Eppleson overruns the ball. Jarman. Quick hands and quick feet. Cabot. Hardy's up from centre half back. Liberatore gets out of his road pretty quickly. Grant at half forward, tries it one handed. Should have Tasker. Been and they're able to tie it up for another ball up. You know what's interesting about Callot? He's got a bit of strength for a little fella, and his legs are very strong in holding conditions. See how he broke the tackle, ran, and then kicked the ball 40 to 50 metres. And that does take strength, I guess. My word. Wren up high. McDermott, who's got a lot of kicks in this quarter. Kicks to the centre wing position. Foster overruns the ball. There is a free kick. It's going the Crows' way. Now, Bickley's going to take it. No, he's not. It's going to be taken by Traginza. Short kick. Not a well-directed one. It's unbelievable. Was in, in the hands, hands of the, of the trainers. trainers. Yeah. It's, uh, he's going to get the free kick. Wiedemann. I think with all the mud on him. Yes, it is. Might have been the trainer that knocked the ball out of his hands. <laughs> So Wiedemann, too far out to score, with two kicks from there. Marking contest, the ball hits the deck again. Kennedy tries to tie it up, and does. One of the Dowris defenders in the AFL. And the ball up. Mean green fighting machine, Rick Kennedy. Charles and McIntyre. Clue from Wiedemann. And Wiedemann might get a free kick here. There is a whistle. Or is he going to ball it up again? Might find one now, Peter, after a couple of uh, ball-ups. It's about 25 players around the ball. That's the reason. Charles taps down. Again, not very far. All socket out of the pack. Kennedy, here he is once more. To Atkins, who's been a little bit quieter in the last 10 minutes, and Atkins kicks up towards midfield. Stanley couldn't quite take the mark. Attempted tap on by Grant. He's still underneath the footy there. Or well, got the football underneath him, should I say, Chris Grant. And coming up now is Scott Lee. The umpire will call for a ball-up. Not far away from the very muddy centre. But the condition of this ground is very ordinary all over. Chance now for Bickley. McGuinness pushed off the football. 
Kluge probably not quite desperate enough. In there is Baxter. Handball to McPherson. Good harassing there by Adelaide. Jarman tries to get it to McGuinness. Now a chance for Liberatore. Somehow he got into the action there, Tony Liberatore, and cleared it wide to half back. In goes Hunter with Wren, and it's a free kick to Footscray off the boot of the tall Adelaide player on the full, and it will go to Hunter. Plays on quickly. Goes to McPherson. Back to Hunter. Hunter kicks Footscray towards half forward. Grant can't mark. Maynard under pressure. So is Lee. Opportunity for Tasker. Away to Wiedemann. Wiedemann makes... Waste no time. The kick goes to half forward. Jarman. Short kick. McIntyre probably should have taken that. Back he goes towards Jamison. Over the top there for Footscray was Mansfield. And the Footscray player will get the free kick for... Rod Jamison not moving the ball on. Well, I thought it was a bit stiff not to get in the back initially. And I thought the uh, umpire was out of position there and then went with the crowd. Charles Marks. Long hand pass. Kellett loves to run with the footy. Play on. One touch on the ground. And the kick is not bad again. Directly towards full forward. But young Ballantyne out of position there. And Smart takes a uh, fairly straightforward mark in front of his face. Smart plays on. Kicks it wide to half back. Bickley is the player out there that he was looking for, and Bickley gathers it. Hard up against the boundary line. His high kick goes towards half forward, and a good diving mark taken by Steve McPherson for the Bulldogs. Centering kick by McPherson. Looking for Charles. He's found him, but there's a free kick in the meantime. The advantage rule is a paid no. Charles has to bring the ball back, and it's going to be taken by Hunter. Thought he shepherded Jarman out of the contest then. Hunter with a free kick on the edge of the centre square. I don't think there'll be any further scoring though, the clock ticking down. And the siren due to go any tick of the clock. We're right underneath it here, so we will hear it. There it is, Charles takes the kick. But at half time, no goals have been kicked at the Geelong Road end. Putsgray 3-9-27 and Adelaide 2-4-16. So only five goals to half time. But of course, if we go back a few rounds, they uh, played a draw here with the Sydney Swans. They only kicked nine goals for the game. I don't think there's any way I'm going to get the uh, parcel of goodies from ICI, Pete. How's that? With the World Studio, a very good afternoon to Bruce McAvoy. ...and as often as possible. Now he wants a lift from players like McDermott, Hart, Jarman and Rowe, players that Adelaide viewers would now excel in these conditions. And um, he's also stated that he wants more talk around the forward line when the ball in fact does get down the forward line. Terry Wheeler, he was about as furious as Graham Corns was at quarter time at half time and he claims that uh, Footscray's getting more use of the ball but they're not taking advantage of it. Thank you Max. Footscray going left in the third quarter. As the umpire comes in to start proceedings, the Bulldogs leading 3-9, the Crows 2-4 under pretty heavy conditions at the Western Oval. Atkins, now with a sleeveless jersey, played the first half in the long sleeve version. Royal, fumbled. Hawkins could get there first. Gets taken out of it, though. A good block again by Collinhook. The ball comes onto the half-back line. Tregenza's kick to his opposite number 12. And that is, of course, Eppleston. Eppleston with the new ball, the half-forward. And that's a good grab. Foster. Foster. Over to Dougie Hawkins. Smart just punches the ball away. Collinhook. Wren. A hurried hand pass to Lee, who decides to kick it off the ground. McDermott. Possession number 23. Filky. Out wide. McGuinness. Not the most popular player here this afternoon. Baxter fumbles. Jarman. Don't give him too many opportunities. He'll bury you very quickly. This is Steve McPherson. Kicks the ball across his body. McGuinness got underneath it. This is Big Wren. He's done all right. As he came onto the ground. Back to Filkey. Filkey hugs the boundary line with the kick. Off the hands of Kluge. Puts both players at the fall of the ball. Baxter goes for a hand pass to McPherson. In turn to Eppleston. Eppleston kicks Footscray into their forward half. Close to the boundary line. It goes over on the full, so a free kick to Adelaide to be taken back there by Pays. An interesting story come out of Adelaide today that they've been saying that McGuinness has got a calf injury. Well, I was told during the week that he's got an actually got a broken right thumb. And if you look at it, he has got that bandage today. 
kick by Coleman up to towards the full forward position for Footscray. Back there is Smart. He takes it over for a boundary thrown in the right forward pocket. Bulldogs have brought uh, Michael Ford onto the ground and uh, can't quite pick up the player who's on the interchange bench at the moment, but uh, certainly Ford looking resplendent in the Footscray outfit. Hasn't been dumped into the mud as yet, but uh, I don't think it'll be too long before he dirties his lovely blue out, blue and red and white outfit. Now pays, kicks Adelaide back out towards half-back. Gather by Eppleston. Eppleston plays on. Back onto the left foot. No, hand pass in towards centre-half forward. Hunter onto the right foot. Hunter kicks in towards centre-half forward. And the mark is taken there by Maynard. And that was Hunter's 22nd possession, so he's been a fine contributor in the first half. Maynard's kick is pretty good. He finds Filky just wide of uh, the centre of the ground. He plays on. Floating kick to half forward. Back there is Mansfield. Stanfield in there as well. Mansfield still at the bottom of the pack, and the umpire will call for a ball up. Yeah, and Foster's been... Peter Foster has been moved to centre-half forward, and Mansfield has filled his role at centre-half back for Footscray. I think Footscray, if they're going to win this game, they need to kick three or four goals and keep Adelaide goalless in this quarter. But very, very important that they score something to the left-hand end. McDermott's kicked towards full forward. Out comes Murphy, off to Jamison. Good smother. Now a chance for Liberatore. Handball wider still. Callett skillfully gets around his opponent. Kicks it to the wing. No mark taken. Wren. Well, he's oh. been paid. Much to the... Uh, disappointment of the Footscray fans but Wren has been paid the mark on centre wing. And he'd certainly be the first bloke here to know if it was raining 198 centimetres. Does it mean it hits him first before everyone else? I reckon it would. And half forward for Adelaide. Coleman, Liberatore Liberatore's kick towards the wing and Wren's got it again doing well. Handball away to Pays Pays' left foot kick to half forward chopped off by McPherson McPherson kicks it quickly back towards half forward Desperate stuff sown there by Hawkins. Grant's tackle on Lee. Chance for Liberatore. Handball Atkins. Lovely to Grant. Grant will put Footscray to within goal scoring distance. Up towards full forward proper. Getting back as Darrell Hart. Kick off the ground by Royal. Smart's under an enormous pressure. He's still got the football. Tackled by Valentine. And I would have let play go on there. Interesting decision, Gerard. Did he have the ball or not? Yes, well, it's, uh, I guess you could have a 50 uh, cent bet each way. I thought he was in control of the ball, even though he was tapping it up in the air. Footscray player certainly thought so and tackled him. Smart. Straight down the ground with the kick. Coleman in front. Couldn't take the grab. McGinnis. Again, quick to get boot to ball. This is Eppleston and Clue. Well, good smother. Clue's going to come up with the footy. Back to McDermott. Kicks to half forward. Is that a mark to Murphy? No. Looks great combining. Well to run it out at the fence. Baxter from McPherson. Kicks out a player on centre wing, and that's Colin Hilke. Have to be quick. Trick ends a great tackle. And that's holding the ball. That was a good decision. Well, that was poor play by Colin Yuki. He must have seen Simon Trigenza. Bearing down on him. You think he would have heard him anyway, Rob? Well, when he was about to take the ball, Simon Tregenza was only about 10 or 12 metres from him. Well, he's not the bloke who tried to outpace, is he? Tregenza kicks to half forward. Coleman. Uh, that was a uh, good piece of handball. Kick towards half forward now. Foster overruns it. Back up support from Grant. Maynard. A particular spot there on the rest of the over. It was about the worst of the practice wicket area. A player that would know that pretty well is Merv Hughes, who is uh, here today. I think it'd be a little dry when he played here. Wren, that's front posse. Colin Hick this time on the end of the hand pass from Hawkins. Maynard. Oh, was that a throw? Crowd certainly thought it was. Smart again. Over to Hart. Tasker. Runs well out of full back and again kicks the ball long to the outer side. Plenty of space out there, loping after it. There's Eppleston. Good shepherd by Ford to keep Klug at bay and he kicks to half forward. He's found Liberatore. The Bradlow medalist kicks it to within scoring distance on a good mark to Smart. Great skills in this player. 
Good aerialist. McGuinness kicks out wide to Filky. In short to uh, Bickley. Still inside his own defensive 50 metre line. Punch away by Kevin. Tregenza. There's a pretty heavy traffic at midfield. Half forward for the Crows. And there's a lot of space down there for Murphy to move it. Murphy now running inside 50 metres. Left foot kick towards full forward. And getting back there for Footscray is Matthew Mansfield. Hand passes away to Kennedy. Kennedy in turn to Hunter. Back to Kennedy. And the Bulldogs out of trouble. Kennedy's kick in short. Colin Uke gets around two or three. Gee whiz, you're an individual there, Stephen. A couple of times you probably could have given it away. Liberatore. Callot, a chance, no. Good tackle, Callot on McGuinness. Ball runs free. May have set it up now. Foster kicking towards full forward, overrunning it there was Ballantyne. Ball rebounds to Tasker. And Tasker clears for Adelaide across half back. And the mark is taken out there by Filkey. Bulldogs look to chance. Short pass, McDermott. Backward of the centre wing. Kicking towards the centre is pretty good. And he picks out Tony McGuinness. Guinness to Tregenza. Tregenza to right half forward and Colin Yook. Fine mark over the top of Lee. So a good duel. He's gone in short. Player on his own doesn't let him down to that Stanfield. And Steve McPherson on his own too at left half forward. Didn't see him. In fact, he went the other direction. He did well too because Foster's taken the grab. Forward on the run. 40 metres out, directly in front. Good Shepherd Royal, but he's off target, so still the Bulldogs can't get a major. They haven't scored a goal since the first quarter. Well, Michael Ford is better known as a backman. I guess on that occasion he certainly kicked like one, but uh, the Crows are a little bit slack in picking up these running players from Footscray, and uh, certainly appears to be a bit of a weakness in their defence at the present time. I was going to say he's out there on his own on that wing. 3-10 to 2-4. Foster with the climb, can't come down with the mark, Lee tries to kick it off the ground Baxter it was Wiedemann who got the call to play on and that's a good mark to Klug in the glue pot just wide of the centre circle goes straight down the ground almost a mark to Stanfield on the bottom is Mansfield Tregenza, see how did he do that made some space, kick short tried to find Klug well tackled by Eppleston. Is that a mark? Nick and has it. Gee, I didn't think that was the required distance, but the umpire gives him the nod. And Mark Micken, a player who did so very well against the Eagles last week at Football Park. Let's see how far that went, Gerard. Oh, yeah. Well, it was the bare minimum, I guess, Peter. So Mark Micken, former captain of the Brisbane Bears, and he has kicked the goal. Wednesday on 7. What do you think you're doing? Meet Ernest. Yeah, yeah. He cops it all in a riotous new movie that makes National Lampoon look like kindergarten. Oh. You know Chevy Chase, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, now there's America's latest funny man, Ernest. <laughs> there ain't nothing that can keep this man down. For the first outrageous time on television, <laughs> Ernest goes to camp. Wednesday on 7. And good strength by Michael Murphy to get the ball to Micken, which resulted in the Adelaide side's third goal. Errol Hart couldn't get through. Micken's 12 tackle. Umpire will be forced to ball it up. Going nowhere then was Micken. Players are going to be pretty tired in the last quarter, I would think. Chance there for Filkey. Mark taken by McPherson. McPherson's kicked to half forward. Foster, Atkins, lovely hand pass. Royal who's been quiet. Long hand pass looking for Grant. Good gather. Oh, excellent skills, Chris Grant. Outside 50. Kicks into the pocket. No mark to Ballantyne. Away after it goes Ford and Smart. Ford gathers. No. Can't control it. Goes over for a boundary throw in. Nigel Smart looking for the free kick. Gets it. And it may have come off kind of Ford's boot. Ford's boot. boot. And Smart will take the free kick for Adelaide in the back pocket. Done pretty well back there, Nigel Smart. Even though young Ballantyne kicked two goals in the uh, first quarter. Kick by Filkey goes back towards the wing. Klug gathers. He's done pretty well 
never looks as though he's out of first gear, John Kluk, but uh, gathers possessions quite nicely. Jarman and Baxter. Jarman gets his foot to the ball. Very, very skillfully done. Chance there for Maynard. Flip out the back, Kluk. Away to Jarman. Adelaide will do something here. McDermott could touch it on the ground again and run inside 50. Do it again. There's no one there. Chance for Jarman. Unselfishly, McGuinness. And McGuinness is about 25 metres out directly in front. And the Adelaide side ran that ball beautifully. Didn't they? Now, I guess we'll get a close-up of McGuinness's thumb here. But it is very heavily bandaged. But we see here the captain, Craig McDermott, passing it off to Andrew Jarman, his partner in crime. And there's the other one on the end of the short pass, McGuinness. And McGuinness wouldn't have any trouble, I wouldn't think, with the distance. Just getting some footing would be his biggest problem. No problems for the uh, Adelaide Rock. Back into the centre. Scores level after Footscray led by 23 points at quarter time. Coleman tries to soccer off the ground. Royal having a bit of a, an argument with uh, McDermott behind the play. No love lost between that pair. Barely a throw up. I think I'll do that again. Took the umpire going take two. Coleman this time. Slaps down. Wiedemann. Got a quick hand pass away. Socket away by Atkins. Good football to get the ball into the open spaces. Footscray's half forward line. Smart off the ground. Ford, who's done okay since he came on. And Atkins this time uh, takes the mark. Maybe just within kicking distance. Footscray looking for their first goal since the first quarter in which they kicked 3 6. In the first quarter, Atkins had 17 possessions. In the second quarter, he had Wiedemann tagging him all over the place and was reduced markedly down to only seven possessions. And even in this quarter, this would be his most effective kick today. Certainly will be if it's a goal. 40 metres out, low trajectory kick, it won't even get the distance. Footscray mark, not paid. That was Ballantyne, who's already kicked two. He has another snapshot and was registered only a behind. Gerard, was that a mark? Well, I don't believe so. I thought the umpire was in perfect position there. He's 15 yards away, directly in front of the play, so uh, he was obviously convinced that he didn't have control, and I'm going to go with him. Tasker, that's why you want to brown that middle. Yes, he's supposed to play in front. Mark Micken does that. Gets the mark from Glenn Coleman. Maynard. Flug in front. At the back, Filky. From the edge of the square, Filky kicks towards centre half forward. No mark taken. Back it comes to Royal, who, as we just mentioned, has been fairly quiet today. He's kicked to the centre wing position. Colin Yook, after taking the hand pass from Grant. Back it goes to Coleman, looking for options, not too many there. Colin Yook again, back to Grant, right on 50. Good speed to get clear of a lot of players. A long shot in towards the 10 metre square off the hands of the pack and smart. We'll try to take the ball out of bounds, and in fact, he succeeds in doing that. Boundary throw in 15 metres from goal, 10 and a half minutes left in the quarter. Well, in fact, uh, Royal has been replaced by Darren Stanley, who's got his first game. They've moved Doug Hawkins up into the forward pocket, and as we said, Michael Ford's taken his wing. Nigel Smart and Maynard have done very well in the key defensive posts for Adelaide. Ball goes wide to Filkey. He's tackled, and tackled well by Ford. Kick off the ground by Wiedemann. Desperate stuff by Adelaide at half back, and it goes over for a boundary throw in. I don't know much about Wiedemann, but having a look at him, I'd say these conditions would be perfectly suited to his type of play. Yes, I don't think he's got a lot of uh, just natural speed over the ground, but uh, a lot of determination. And when they're in trouble, they've picked him a couple of times this year. Hawkins striving to get through. Kick there by Pays, close to the line in front of Ford. It goes over for a boundary throw in. So it's been a uh, pretty good quarter by Adelaide. Footscray still to kick a goal in this third term, and Adelaide, on the other hand, have kicked two goals up to that right-hand end, which before half-time, neither side could get a goal. Tasker, Grant, kick off the ground by the uh, Footscray centre-half forward. And surely that's in the back. And the Footscray fans going wild here with excitement. They've got a free kick. He was being held earlier, wasn't he, Gerard? Yes, I think the uh, free kick could have been played a touch earlier. Tasker did have hold of him by the jumper. Chris Grant, who started in sensational fashion in the first quarter, 
possibly a little bit quiet in the second quarter and they need a lift from him. There's a fight in the goal square be between Colin Uke and uh, his Adelaide opponent. Lee. And still with the emergency umpire out there and the boys still have a dust up with each other. And a big swing by Lee. Grant has the football in the pocket. Shot for goal by Chris Grant. And it misses to the right. The rookie of the year in 1990. Unfortunately, he contracted glandular fever over summer and uh, had a very interrupted pre-season. Has struggled a little bit in the uh, early parts of the year and is only just getting back to some reasonable form. It's Gray lead by two points with eight and a half minutes left. McPherson, handball over the top. Liberatore tries to Shepard, then gets the hand pass away. Grant, lovely, Foster. Left foot kick by Foster. May have carried. It's there. 4-12 to 4-4. Foster gets the goal. Eight points the difference. Jamison. Can the Crows get the quick reply? Looking for options. He's got Bickley. Bickley goes in short. Tried to find Jarman. Couldn't do so. Callis down there. There's a free kick. He saw Jarman poke the boot out trying to keep Callis out. Baxter. Baxter out. And very Joe, Look at the back foot there. Now that's just not on from Jarman. Poking that out. And he's uh, caught Baxter. Probably a midships I'd imagine. Darren Baxter, the Fitzgerald side's best taggers. Coleman in front. Can't take the mark in front of Micken. Stanley, one of the cleanest players on the ground. He won't be for very long. Foster off the ground. Hart should get there first for the Crows. He does in front of Stanley. On to Filkey. They had a good mark to Mansfield. Not a bad young player, this fellow, either. I saw him in the State of Origin game. Uh, from memory, Robbo, I think. For Tassie. Forward. It's taken a while to settle into the Footscray side. And they've played a couple of games. McPherson, one of the real goers and veterans. And that's a great mark. Yeah, well done, Chris Grant. Grant. Well done. A typical wet weather mark. Played in front. Got the Vickies. Well, now, is that a mark? You'd have to play it for Valentine. And good agility, Jared, wasn't it, for a uh, tall youngster? Yes, I like the look of these two players, both Chris Grant, who we know has got ability, but Ballantyne, who really has got on the scene today, well, that could almost have been declared a, uh, a bump ball, I guess, but uh, umpire paid him the grab. When you consider they've got a few other players, Leon Cameron for one in the seconds at the present time, good quality junior players, well, uh, the future of Footscray does look particularly bright. He's kicked two. He got one from about this distance in the first quarter on the run. And again, he's got the distance, but not the accuracy. And through for only one behind. What's he got? 2-2, two, two, Robert? Yes. 4-13 to 4-4. Four, four. So nine points the difference. And if Footscray loses this match, then really they could blame their inaccuracy, especially in that first quarter when they kicked 3-6. Hart, just up from the back pocket. Looks for Mickin. Grant again, same spot. Good mark. Colin York, yes. Well, Glenn Coleman's been playing the centre half pos forward position for Footscray and doing quite well. But with the absence of Scott Wine, they've moved him onto the ball. And it's obviously paid, paying dividends with Grant playing so well. And as a young player, he could fill the role that uh, Calvin Templeton once played so well here many years ago. Colin York for his second, but well off target. Not even a score. It's out of bounds on the full. So. Graham Corns rather animated on the phone. Smart takes the mark at the left half-back flank. Whatever Smart does is usually pretty good at his disposal. He's excellent his ball skills. Uh, certainly equal to that adjective. Smart kicks to centre wing. Big pack of players in the marking contest. None can take it. It's Eppleston. A short kick, not a well-directed one. Grant a little bit late on the scene, and the mark is taken by Tregenta. But you may have mentioned about Footscray having a draw with the Swans. They were very inaccurate that day as well. Only kicking 4-11 and the Swans kicking 5-5. Five, five. And one wonders whether their inaccuracy today is going to cost them. Yep. Adelaide going towards half-forward. Filky kicks it to within scoring distance. No mark taken. Big Wren is back there, but uh, well done, Mansfield. And with composure, he does that little kick across his body to Kellett. Kellett running. Gave the handball to Hawkins. Really didn't have to. Kellett off the ground, summed it up pretty well. Stanley, handball back, Atkins, Kellett, good running, short pass, too short, 
an inaccurate mark to Maynard. Maynard's got a player in the centre. It's Hart. He's given, been given a uh, free rein. Handballs away to Tasker. Tasker from backward of the centre. High kick out wide. Out there is Jamison. Controls the ball pretty well. And kicks it in towards half forward. And Wren takes the mark on the 50 metre line. I know most players are two-sided kickers these days, but uh, Nigel Callett should have made that extra yard and got onto his right foot, rather than doing the pretty thing with the left, and uh, this could end up costing him a goal with Wren with the ball. I'll tell you what, this player looks as though he's got a future too. Sean Wren kick falls in short and bounces just inside the boundary line so we'll have a throw in in the left forward pocket for Adelaide. Footscray will have to defend grandly here with three and a half minutes left. They really can't afford to give a goal away. Adelaide have kicked two in this third term Jarman, back there McPherson for Footscray, Wren McGuinness, Klug can't get his foot to the ball effectively chance there for Stanfield his kick goes wide and it's marked out there by Filkey about uh, 85 metres around from the Adelaide goal, the short pass is okay and it's marked by Pays just under 3 minutes left can the Adelaide Crows get a goal in the uh, last few minutes of the third term, Pays has kicked a full forward punched away by the Footscray defence Coleman gets the handball away to Stanfield Stanfield over the top to Hunter and Footscray out of trouble Hunter's kick Atkins scrambling after it with Wiedemann very similar looking players and there's another one with uh, the long hair Michael Ford and the ball is kicked over in front of Tasker and Grant for a boundary throw in but it's down in Footscray's forward half so maybe the Bulldogs in the last couple of minutes can get another goal they lead at the moment by nine points and the time clock showing us that just over two minutes left in this third quarter big pack of players on the outer side Libratore at the bottom of the pack applies a tackle so no one's going anywhere when you get tackled by Libbers that is generally the case McDermott. Yeah, he's never argues, does he, Tony Liberatore? He just gets on with the game, no matter what happens. Yes, well, it's a good example to young players, isn't it? He won a Brownlow medal. Jam, uh, Jarman, Foster, he's not going anywhere either. Won the lot, didn't he? Morris, Gardner and Brownlow. <laughs> yes, so many have done that. I think he's the only one. Actually, there's an interesting question in the uh, press this week, whether Alan Jakovic could win the Gardner medal and the Brownlow medal in the one year. You can think about that one. We win the goal kicking in the reserves. I don't know whether he'll win it in the seniors. That'll be something as well, wouldn't it? Coleman just inside the boundary line. And the mark has been paid. Hunter from half back. Looks for options. Mansfield. Kellett. Providing plenty of run to Rick Kennedy. He doesn't quite have the speed. The hand pass wasn't particularly well directed, Rick. His teammate under plenty, uh, plenty of pressure there. Hunter Grant, underground hand pass. That was uh, Stanley, and that is a high tackle. Well, they were a bit stiff then, Footscray. They uh, probably just one hand pass too many, do you think? Yes, I thought so. They should have gone with a longer kick, as we've said before. Corns has said it to uh, Adelaide, and they're playing a far more direct brand of football and playing a hell of a lot better. Wren almost took the mark from Wiedemann's kick. Stanley on the bottom of that pack and it will be a ball up 30 Stop. seconds left before the siren so probably no further scoring in the third quarter that means Footscray going to have to do a pretty manful uh, share of defending in the last quarter by having a word to Rick Kennedy before the bounce Coleman grab Tregenza thrown out of the pack Libertore great effort to get the ball in the first place and it will be a boundary throw in or in fact probably it won't be because the siren's going to beat us and there it is to end the third quarter and the scoreboard at the western oval showing footscray 413 leading adelaide 44 37 players 28 at three quarter time And here at three-quarter time, the players just disbanding now after being addressed by their respective coaches. Nine points in Footscray's favour. They led by 23 at quarter time, 11 at half time, and now only nine points. Valentine has two, Foster one, Colnyuk one, and for Adelaide, McGuinness, Murphy, Micken and Thompson have all kicked one goal.
So can you see uh, Adelaide getting up, Gerard? The last quarter they seem to have the scoring in. Yes, most definitely, Peter. I think this game is certainly in the balance. Adelaide uh, jumped out of the blocks in the second half there and uh, with a better side in the third quarter, I believe they can win the ball out of the glue pot in the middle and kick the ball direct, get a couple of quick goals in there well and truly in, into it, in with a big show. And I know we've spoken uh, at length about the uh, Footscray's potential, but uh, and we see the progressive scores there. St Kilda 18, 16, 124, leading Carlton 8, 6, 54. Essendon 14, 14, 98. They're back in front of the Bears 11, 7, 73. And Hawthorne 17, 20, 122, well in front of Fitzroy 5, 5, 35. All right, let's go down to Max Stevens on the boundary. Well, Peter, in fairness to Adelaide, when you train and play on football park and you've got to come and play in these conditions, it makes things pretty tough. But I suppose that's the way it is in AFL football. Now, Graham Corn says a bit of determination and guts will win you this game. He was fairly pleased with that term. The mudlarks lifted and the results are on the scoreboard. He wants them to use the wings and the flanks. Don't worry too much about the centre area. Just play it down the wings and things should come your way. Terry Wheeler, after more numbers around the ball, smother it any way possible. Just get to it first. Right, Max, nine points the difference. The final quarter at the Western Oval, 4.13 to 4.4. The Bulldogs by nine points. A very low scoring affair in heavy conditions. The two max combined, McGuinness and McDermott. And none of them can get it out of the centre. And once again, we'll see a ball up. Best quarter for Footscray was when they kicked 3 6 in the opening term. Nine scoring shots, but registering only three. And one wonders if that on the overall wash up will prove costly. Klug, clean possession out of the centre, kicks to half forward. And that's a mark to Jamison. Great use of the body there. Low trajectory kick, the ball was new, tried to find Jarman Mickens there, just about threw it. Nothing for that. Stanfield. Kicks to centre wing, Tregenza. Hawkins nearly has him. Well shepherded. McGuinness. Not a good kick from Tony McGuinness. And I can't really find a reason for that, Gerard. A new ball, maybe he just didn't get footy. Well, why he went onto his right foot is beyond me, beyond my understanding, Peter. His left foot was clear and he should have gone straight to centre-half forward or even longer. Nicken and Colden. Atkins. McPherson. Foster goes the punch away to clear the ball from the grasp of Maynard. And once again, it will be a boundary throw-in right in front of Graham Corns' his coach's box out there on the outer side. A Doug Hawkins wing. Wren with Foster. Atkins taps the ball down. McPherson off the ground. McGuinness almost into the back of his opponent. Tregenza has his kick well smothered, very close to the boundary line. And they can't keep it in. A boundary throw in once again to follow. Yes, I was going to say previously about the future of the uh, Crows. I think they've done uh, marvellously well this year. When you consider they listed 10 juniors in their 52, they've got a lot of talent coming through, most of whom have paid, played in their successful Teal Cup squads. Chance here for Footscray through Steve McPherson. Kick towards half forward. Footscray mark taken there by Foster. Handball away to Colin Uke. Colin Uke's kick. The goal square is vacant. It may bounce through. No, it's hurried over by Tasker for a rush behind of the Bulldogs. A few of those names that I talk of, Randall Bone, a ruckman from South Adelaide, Jonathan Ross, Brenton Sanderson. They've got a lot of young talent coming through the Crows. Kick in, comes to where the Crows out number two to one, Smart and Maynard. Maynard takes the mark, gives the hand pass away to Lee. Lee's kick towards half forward. Adelaide a chance here. Gather by Jamison, comes to the back. Jarman gathers it beautifully runs away for one of the rare times from Baxter, but the kick is too high and Kennedy marks safely for Footscray in the full back position his pass is to Eppleston long sweeping hand pass to Baxter Baxter runs away from half back and kicks it to centre wing jumping high and taking a very good mark is Mansfield on centre wing and he transfers play into the centre, the player on his own there was McPherson who's played very very well for the Bulldogs this afternoon Steve McPherson just holding play up a little bit. I think there's too much time for that, Steve. Kick towards half forward, Mark to Atkins. Kick it quickly. Grant's up there on his own. Now the short pass is in, and it could be effective. Grant gets it beautifully. Very awkward. 
but he took a good mark just inside the 50 metre line. Too far out to score, I think. Kicking into a slight breeze down to that Geelong Road end. Ball's not too muddy yet, though, Robbo. Now, if he was ever going to kick it today, it'd be now. This uh, the new ball. But just looking at the way he's preparing for this shot at goal, he's not too confident whatsoever. A little bit of hesitation by Chris Grant. If he kicks this, it'll be the biggest kick we've seen here this year, I think. And it's not bad. Gets the distance. Just fades away to the right through for one behind. So pretty Chris Grant has only kicked two behinds for the day. Pretty stagnant forward line with uh, giving... A little bit of credit there too, Grant. I think he was looking for an option, but none was, uh, none was forthcoming. And Footscray should be moving continually while that uh, player's there waiting for a lead. Tasker to kick in. A good long kick in front. Grant! One of the best marks we've seen today. McPherson. No mark. Yes, the umpire has paid it. That's Ballantyne. He kicked two goals in the first quarter, and it's worth remembering that Footscray hasn't scored a goal yet at this end. Well, Footscray have got to leave these guys in now. I think, you know, when you spoke earlier, Jared, about the young guys in the future of the football club here, um, I think for, the, for their own confidence, they've certainly got to play the last, what, three matches after today. Well, they can't make the five, can they? Or six. No, but you must, you must persist with the youth. And on the form of today, well, they wouldn't be dropped anyhow. What a kick! Not with that kick. It's a goal. His third. Not dragged off it. McGuinness kicks the Crows into attack towards their left half forward flank. The ball rebounds. Good hip and shoulder there applied by Hunter. Libratore comes out with the ball. Farms it out the back of the pack to McPherson. McPherson kicked to centre wing. And it will beat everybody over the line. Yeah, that's throw it. been a free kick against Hunter on Kluge. He gave him the old backdrop, didn't he? Uh, it was terrible. I saw you shaking here, Jared, and uh, we just have to make the comment because I'm sure decisions go against uh, the Victorian clubs when they go to Adelaide, but uh, that was a bad one. Ford's kick towards half forward. Oh, up high! Grant has jumped early, hung in the air, and taken a dry weather mark. Handballs away. Hawkins, brilliant running. In the pocket. The pass is all right. No! Nigel Smart just gets there to punch the ball away. And it goes over for a boundary throw in. Excitement here at the Western Oval. The Bulldogs have lifted their work rate in the early part of the last term. They lead 5-15 to 4-4. Chance once again. Foster doing the ruck work. Gets the ball to the back. Wiedemann underneath the pack. Grant has pulled off the ball. Bulldog supporters looking for a free kick. Hawkins a bad bump there. Adelaide player on the ground that maybe Lee is it? Tasker? Bickley is it? Bickley. And McGuinness could see. So could Maynard, but the free kickers go to Adelaide. The Adelaide player still on the ground. Wiedemann clears for the Crows. Still the Adelaide player lies prostrate on the ground. The trainer there. Footscray will go into attack. Eppleston short pass over the head of Atkins. Liberatore. Play will go on. Atkins has the football. Advantage is paid. Into the pocket. No mark taken. Adelaide defence under pressure. Wren gets a short kick. Filky gathers it. Forced to kick with the left foot. Close to the boundary line. Two on one. Good punch by Eppleston from behind. Clue gathers it. Sweeping hand pass. Wiedemann fumbles. Stanley onto the football. Kicks it to within scoring distance for the Bulldogs. Out in front there was Maynard. Now it's taken away by Smart. Broken down. Callan, brilliant reflexes. Away to Colinuk. Colinuk goes for goal, hooks the kick, and it goes out on the full in the left forward pocket. The Adelaide Crows will defend at this stage safely. Yes, and that was Bickley that was uh, grounded before from a fairly heavy bump, if that's what you'd like to call it, from Doug Hawkins. But he is now up and uh, appears to be OK. Not running, though, Gerard. Nick's, uh, I was looking at him through the glasses. He still looks a little bit groggy. And Wren has taken a very good mark. Well, the Crows need to get something moving quickly. A bit of stay in this game because 17 and a half minutes left in the quarter. McPherson looks great. Lifting in this final quarter. Not with that kick, though, Steve. Out of bounds on the fall. And Wren will take the free kick. He's short of right centre wing. Good use of the body by Jamison. Now it's a hip out. Oh, no way, umpire. 
going to Mansfield, the free kick. Well, that was good use of the body, as you call, Peter, and how the umpires played that is beyond me. He kicks in towards uh, Atkins, a good kick. Always busy. Was a little bit down in the second quarter. Opened brilliantly and finishing well. Marking contest, big pack of players, Bickley in front, couldn't take the grab, still perhaps a little bit groggy. Stanley, snapshot, is there! Stanley's first goal and certainly one to remember, 51 plays 28 now, 16 and a half minutes left in this match. So the Crows really will have to lift their work rate if they're to stay in contention. And towards the edge of the square, Mansfield, boot to ball quickly, charges downfield, long kick, Hart, can't trap it, Grant in front, could have got a free kick, the fans were certainly looking for it, but the umpire has decided on a bounce, which will take place inside the centre square. And Mark Bickley has been uh, removed from the ground, he's been replaced by Stephen Rowe, so I assume he'd be uh, in the hands of the trainers, or at least the doctor. Between centre and centre half forward for Footscray, Liberatore kicks it over his shoulder. Colin Uke couldn't quite get onto it, Foster. Colin Uke, left foot snapshot by Colin Uke, misses. It's through for one behind. One goal, three to Stephen Colonuk. Plenty of ability. Tasca, straight up the ground. Kicks it nicely. Big punch by Atkins. McGuinness can't get into the game. Foster gets his foot to the ball. Oh, that would have been a miracle bit of... Oh, Hawkins, surely free kick round the neck. Played for it beautifully, Dougie Hawkins. And he's got it. It's against Wiedemann. Yes, well, maybe there was a little bit of a square up there in mind from uh, Wiedemann because Doug was involved in that incident previously. But uh, if their fate isn't sealed at the present time, the Crows, it surely will be if Doug Hawkins can convert with this kick. And uh, I'd put my money on him at the present time. Hawkins is kicking from about 40 metres. And he hooks the kick, doesn't quite get the distance. Nearly a mark there to Grant. Chance for Ballantyne. Smart. Good tackle, Grant. Away goes Lee for Adelaide. Kicks it wide. Not far enough, though. Kellett is there for Footscray. Short passes, not quite effective. McGuinness chipping in from Liberatore. Kick off the ground. Chance for Tregenza. Back to McGuinness. McGuinness a short left foot kick towards half forward. And if that's not a mark, it certainly is a free kick out there to Jamison at right half forward for Adelaide. They need some goals, the Crows, pretty quickly. McIntyre couldn't make ground to that ball, beating him over the boundary line. 14 and a half minutes left. Well, they need a big lift from the big three, and that's uh, Jarman, McDermott and McGuinness. Both of whom are just a little bit quiet at the start of this uh, last quarter. Coleman and Micken, Atkins from behind, punches down. Libra Torre onto McPherson for some better ground to get some footing. Atkins shovels it out back to him. That wasn't the best hand pass, but he still did well to get a kick. Ford, who started on the bench. 20-metre hand pass intended for Baxter. He's wide open there. Oh. Well, we call him a hospital hand pass, and that may well be where he finishes up, Baxter. Absolutely wide open. There was, nothing wrong with, there was nothing wrong with the bump, but I just have a feeling the elbow may well have come up. Oh, let's hope it's not hurt badly. They're ugly scenes in football. They're not what the youth want to see. Well, we had an incident last night where Dwayne Lamb, I think, swallowed his mouth guard. They must stop the play and give the people a chance the umpire's got to stop the oh, play. This is the ridiculous. Play is just motionless. They're calling for a stretcher and he's called play on. Well, the stretcher isn't on the ground yet. Yes, it is. Well, he's on his feet, Peter, which is a plus. And where play has continued, and this is Tasca being pursued by Ballantyne. He kicks to the outer side. Down goes Maynard. Well, this game, could, this game could really develop into something spiteful the way players are behaving at the present time. Jamison. Into the pocket, and the mark is taken by Mark Micken. Which is a right half forward flank. Hunter goes the spoil. Filky. Kennedy. They will, I think, revel in such conditions and situations. McDermott at the back. 
punches the ball clear. Eppleston fumbles. Rowe. The quick hand pass wasn't a good one. Kellett. Back to Mansfield. And Wren. Safe chest mark. Throws breaking down across half four. Great tackle. Yes, it was. Spills back to Wren. McDermott again. He's about as far as they get. Coleman. That's going to be the situation once more. Glenn Coleman looking to get rather fancy and does. He gets it across to Stanfield. He's growing in confidence. Touches the ball once. Away he comes around the boundary line. Royal underneath Jarman. And that will be out of bounds in front of Lee and also Jarman. 12 minutes left in the footy. Yeah, Royal's come on to replace Baxter. But if I was Terry Wheeler, my message would be for every Footscray player to get their eyes back on the ball and forget about the man. And Royal looks as though he may have a crook shoulder. The ball at half forward for Adelaide. Eppleston and uh, Stanfield. Stanfield's kick across his body. Bit of a mix up there between Pays and Filky. And certainly Footscray going in pretty hard. And a free kick has been picked out of it against Liberatore. And it will go to Smart, the Adelaide Crows defender. Nigel Smart. The kick towards half forward, but it's marked back there by Michael Ford. Stray fans not too happy. One of their very popular players, Darren Baxter, being flattened about five or seven minutes ago. They make another change. Coleman off and Charles on. The kick into the centre has been marked by Stanley. He'll be looking to give the hand pass away. Oh, he goes further back than uh, nearly than a kick. And gives the hand pass away to McPherson. And McPherson's kick finds Ford on centre wing. He's done well since he's come on Ford on Fergie. Ford's kick towards half forward. Wren gets back. Pays is there to give him a hand. Gets the hand pass, but it really wasn't a hand pass. And the umpire was right onto that. Royal. He's going to run into trouble, Brian Royal. Forced to kick down with the left. Not bad. Looking for Hawkins. Punched away back there by Lee. Lee and Hawkins having a punch up. Umpires right onto it. And maybe a free kick. It's going to Hawkins against Scott Lee. And I think umpire Shane Harris may have seen the first punch. What are you saying, Robert? Well, I think Dougie got <laughs> back into it and uh, had a bit each way. But Hawkins has the free kick about 50 metres from goal. The torpedo punt kick. Lobs in the goal square. And the mark is taken by... Sean Wren. Well, it's definitely been resurrected today, the torpedo. Tregenza. Just up from the back pocket. Time running out for the Crows. In front was Charles. Couldn't take the mark. Wiedemann. McDermott. Kick towards centre wing. Rowe and Hunter. And there was a free kick in the meantime. Taken by... Uh, Jamison it is. What a big dirt. Kennedy leading out well. Bulldogs answering the challenge. Eppleston kicks from the halfback flank up to the centre wing position. Stand there a little bit late on the scene. Tregenza takes the mark. Over to Hart. Measured the options. Finally decides on Wiedemann. His kick was well smothered by Royal. It rebounds up towards Grant. You'll have to, oh, a clash of heads there. Grant came off the better. Totally accidental, I think. Foster. Foster to half forward. Royal waits for it. Looked a little bit proppy earlier with a sort of shoulder injury, perhaps. Tasker. Goes to the member stand side. 11,000. Just an excess here today. Pays. A high kick. Not too many options open for him there. Ford has to get rid of it quickly. Colinuk, Atkins, kicks from a standing start. Pays again. Smart. McGuinness. McGuinness's kick up towards the centre wing position. One of the better parts of the ground. Flew. Kicks it to half forward. Stanfield shows courage. Down goes uh, Rowe. Well, the umpire said it's going to be a Crows free kick. Oh, yeah, he should have paid the earlier one. Well, I think the Crows have got to get a little bit more mobility up onto the ball. Sean Wren isn't really uh, quick enough in these conditions. I'd like to see a smaller player up there at full forward to replace Mickon. Kennedy and McIntyre. And a snapshot for goal by Mc 
McDermott as it is through. Eight and a half minutes left. The player in the picture there, Chris McDermott, uh, limping badly. And the trainer indicating that he may have pulled a thigh muscle after kicking the Adelaide Crows' fifth goal. They trail by three goals. Liberatore has the free kick in the centre of the ground. No one on the mark. Liberatore's drop punt kick towards centre-half forward. Atkins, good tackle. In there is Wren looking for the free kick, but the umpire's having nothing of that. And he'll ball it up just outside 50 metres. About uh, two kicks from Footscray's goal. And McDermott is slowly making his way to the uh, boundary line. He surely has uh, pulled a hamstring, I'd go for. And he's going to be replaced by Bickley. Yeah, it's no good if they're going to win the game. I mean, there's still time for them to kick three goals. But he's taken ages to get off the ground. And I think he may have done it fairly severely, if that's the case, Robbo. Well, he's off now, and Bickley's on. But Footscray going to attack Royal. Kick by Ford. Up into the forward pocket in front of Ballantyne and Tasker and we'll have a boundary throw in in that right forward pocket for the Bulldogs. 6-16 plays 5-4 and 7.5 and minutes left. If Adelaide can get a quick goal certainly the game will go right down to the last minute or two. Big punch by Hawkins to the back. Hart, Maynard for Adelaide. Kicks it wide. No mark taken out there. Callot gathers. Handball away to McPherson. Best man on the ground, Steve McPherson. Played a fantastic game. Up towards full forward. No mark taken. Chance for Ballantyne. In there is Wiedemann. Handball good. Smart. Then Lee. And Lee kicks to a vacant area on centre wing. Hunter running too hard at the football. Filky's a chance. No, it's Rowe. Rowe beautifully tackled by Mansfield. Ball rebounds. Chance now for Charles. Short kick. Pretty good. Liberatore. No. Good defensive work by McGuinness. But a little too... Zealous. There was uh, Tony McGuinness, and the free kick will go to Liberatore just forward of the wing. Short pass is on, and Charles will get his second possession within 30 seconds. Justin Charles, lumbering ruckman. Kick into the pocket. Marcus taken by Royal. When he came back onto the ground at the expense of Baxter, who was nearly knocked out, I thought he had a crook shoulder. What a kick by Brian Royal! Great goal. That should just about do it. Royals first and the Bulldogs close to getting home. 7-16 to 5-4. Well, I was going to say that I thought Brian Royal was a little bit adventurous uh, taking a punt at goal from there. But he obviously knows his ground a lot better than I do and uh, didn't have any problems whatsoever and a terrific kick. All right, let's get into Max Stevens. Some news on the boundary. Chris McDermott, Peter, will take no further part in the game. The runners assured me he's pulled his right hamstring. Off the ground from Colin Yook. And Wiedemann marking in front of his teammates out there. Kicks it in short. And that's a good mark taken by Clue. Robbo said earlier, never seems to get out of first gear, but he's done well. Probably been their most effective forward in conditions that we expect him to revel in. This is Big Wren. Picks the ball up like a rover. Has a snapshot and kicks a goal. So Wren putting through his first and a quick reply. 6-4 to 7-16. It may be too little too late insofar as the Crows are concerned. Yes, well here we see a mark that Justin Charles should have taken. That's not good enough from an up-and-coming player and uh, Sean Wren and his opposition, Ruckman, makes him pay the ultimate penalty. Good mobility from Wren and uh, there's no question that that boy is going to be a star of the future for both uh, the Crows and Adelaide and South Australia. We see here uh, Chris McDermott very, very uh, down on the boundary line. His season may well be finished. Three goals the difference. Out of the centre, Jarman. Colin Yook and Bickley. That's what's interesting, Bickley coming back on because he appeared to be concussed before. This is Kellis. Kicks to centre wing. McPherson. With the hand pass. Maynard and finally Jarman a useful dummy from right centre wing goes for the long kick kicks to half forward Eppleson couldn't take the mark ball spills free and picked up by big Charles Charles is kicking towards the mud patch at midfield Bush Wiedemann with a handball on a forward and they're going to get clear McPherson again kicks to space on centre wing the ball doesn't bounce that kindly for Atkins Grant and Smart forward 
takes the hand pass after some good shepherding and kicks to the 50 metre mark where he's found Foster. Now Brian Royal kicked a goal from there only a few minutes back. He's not having a shot. Centering kick, he's looking for Royal. There's a mark though on the Hawk. Doug Hawkins directly in front. Outmarking Brian Royal. I think he had a few words to Choco. Well, I thought Royal was setting himself a mark of the day there, but it's uh, dancing Douglas Hawkins. It uh, just slipped in. There probably has never been a more skillful player on both sides of the body. And Dougie just wants to take a figure in a little bit of the action with the uh, final minutes of the game. Dancing Douglas. Hawkins from 25 metres out, kicks the goal. Doug Hawkins gets his first and Footscray's 8-16 eight, eight, to 6-4. Yes, well, I have seen Dougie Hawkins celebrate some memorable victories, and I can tell you he's uh, no Rudolph Nureyev, but uh, any specific time of the night? <laughs> Let's just call it night, when the sun's down. Oh, what a great identity is at Footscray, Dougie Hawkins. He's had a fairly quiet day, but uh, what a way to drive a nail into the coffin of the Adelaide Crows. 8.16 to 6.4, and... Just under four minutes left. Charles doing the ruck work. Fairly fresh on the scene. And Lipratore <laughs> about to take it away. Disappointed that he heard the umpire's whistle. So what he was doing. Ball up. Which Gray supporters maybe getting a little excited over something happening down here on the boundary line. There's uh, some uh, altercations between the Footscray fans and the Adelaide Crows trainers. I think it might be the uh, gendarmes on the boundary, Robert. Yes. Security guys. Well, they're coming in to uh, just have a bit of a chat to a couple of people that are down there, and uh, I think the Adelaide people are probably better off just to ignore the Footscray supporters at the moment. They're pretty happy. Adelaide will go home lamenting. Boundary throw in just forward of centre wing. Chance for Ford. Couldn't quite get his foot to the ball. Lee, McGuinness, Filky for Adelaide. Kick towards centre wing. No mark taken. Chance for McPherson. Caught with the football in the finish, but uh, the umpire giving him the benefit of the doubt and will come in and ball it up. Ball up on centre wing, under three minutes left in this match. So the Crows' first trip to the Western Oval will be one that I would think they'd prefer to forget. McPherson, kick smothered. Rebound. Well, Klug might have pushed his opponent in the back. Crowd were looking for a free kick. It's going to be a ball up. Jarman tosses the ball back to the umpire. Robbo, you nominated, uh, who was it? You nominated for best Steve on the ground? McPherson. Steve McPherson. it was. Well, I'd say uh, Chris Grant would have to be almost just as good. Stanley to Atkins, and then Jarman has his kick smothered. Ball still there to be won. Big Charles dives on top of a pack of players. Ah, drags one off. And the obvious solution is to bounce it. To bounce it. Tell you what, you, you, learn, it you learn all about footy, Peter, coming out here to play on the Western Oval on a day like today. The only worst conditions you could have would be if it was windy, but certainly the Adelaide boys have... Uh, it's a baptism been, of fire here. Well, they it? really have been dealt a lesson out here today. Actually, it's a rarity that it's not blowing a gale. You get a strong northerly or southerly blowing straight down the ground, it could be almost impossible. It's almost paradise conditions here at the Western Oval. Well, in, in August, yeah. Charles and Micken. Hawkins over the top. Hunter at right half-back flank. Ooh. Oh, he gets decked after he kicks the ball, and that will be downfield. The player involved there was Bickley, and I wonder if he's uh, with it. Just got a little bit of a score to settle. Mm. Yes, well, you may be right there, Peter. And if, if that's the case, the Crows have got a case to answer. Micken takes the mark from Grant's kick. Kicks from centre half-back. Players just really going through the motions now as the clock ticks down. Following your palms had a hand pass, didn't go to anyone in particular. Ball socket off the ground. Klug looks for McGuinness. Well shepherded by Rowe. McGuinness chips it in short to the left half forward flank. He's got Filky out there. Filky kicks from a standing start. Plenty of crows out there. None can take the mark. It's left to Eppleson to do the tidying up work. Ford the target. Filky taps down. Rowe and Ford. Ford wins out, but still fumbles with the greasy footy. Gave it to his ex-teammate. Yes. He said, give it over here. This is McIntyre, right on the boundary line. Centering kick with the left foot. Eppleston in the row. 
Yes, you wonder whether uh, Tony McInnes may have just yelled out then and uh, his ex-teammate uh, Ford giving the hand pass out, hit him right on the chest. Ethelston's kick goes back towards half-back. Micken could have nearly been paid the mark. Might Smart, Filky, still at half-forward for Adelaide. And Justin Charles trying to con the umpire. There's the siren. Footscray have won by 24 points. 8-16-64, Adelaide 6-4-40. And it was a real battle here at the Western Oval for both sides. And Footscray just showing a little bit more determination and the knowledge of this ground in these very difficult conditions. And Max, you've got a very, very weary looking Tony McGuinness. Tony shaking hands with his uh, ex-Footscray teammates. Max, down on the boundary, on the boundary line with Tony McGuinness. Thanks very much, uh, Robbo. Tony, pretty hard for you to come back here. How hard was it? As you can see by the conditions, it's been a pretty rough day. Uh, the turf's very heavy, but uh, the boys try hard, but Footscray's just a bit too strong in the end. You personally, how hard was it for you to come back and uh, play on the Western Oval? Oh, well, it, was, it was very difficult. I mean, against all my old teammates, but uh, we tried hard. We just weren't good enough. It's not something a lot of teams uh, like doing coming out the Western Oval. OK, Tony, uh, the year and all, have you been happy to change from Footscray to the Adelaide Crows? Oh, well, it'd be nice to, to win 11 games out of the 22. So we just got to win our next two games. That'd be a nice way to finish the year. Looking forward to a hot shower? If they're hot, yes. But just quickly, Tony, the crowd here, one of the one of the most unusual crowds I've experienced all season. Has that always been the case? Oh, it's a community, community suburb, and uh, they follow their footy with a great passion, so I think you might hear it now. OK, mate, thanks a lot. Tony McGuinness. <laughs> Tony McGuinness uh, once loved out here, but uh, I'm sure they'd remember him as one of their great players. And what a, what a good job he did then to stay on the ground and have a good word with Max He's in another jumper, he's interstate, he's come back here, he's copped a nice old raspberry all day long, but I'd like to congratulate him because he did a very good job there to give Max a few words. He's well certainly done. a class act, Tony McGuinness. He's a yeah. great player, he's a gentleman of football, actually, and uh, will do well in the Brownlow medal. Yes, he always catches the umpire's eye. Well, we mentioned at the start of the match that it was going to be hard for the Crows to win here this afternoon. That turned out to be the case, and the final score, Footscray, 8 goals, 16-64. Defeating Adelaide 6440 at the Western Oval. We'll take a break back in just a moment. Well, a good final quarter by Footscray, in which they kicked four goals, three to come out winners by 24 points. And the goal kickers for Footscray, Ballantyne three, singles to Stanley, Royal, Colignook and Hawkins. And for the Crows, all singles. Wren, Jamison, Micken, Murphy, McGuinness and McDermott. So a good match in the end for Footscray and the Adelaide Crows. Well, gentlemen, uh, Gerard, a learning experience, their first outing at the Western Oval. Yes, and it's, uh, there's been a lot of players have a lot of horrendous days out here, Peter, and uh, myself in particular. But uh, I thought it was an interesting game. And at one stage in the last quarter, I thought the Crows were going to get up, particularly early. But uh, Footscray lifted. Chris Grant had a fantastic purple patch there. And uh, with Ballantyne, he, uh, they, they formed a terrific uh, forward line for Footscray. But it was probably their back line, Robbo, that uh, held them in good stead. Well, actually, I'll just mark down there that Adelaide really missed a bloke, a quality player like Hodges up in the forward line. They've only been able to kick six goals, have ten scoring shots. And I note here that uh, their, their points for... There's only 1,740, and teams up in the six are well over the 2,000. And I think that's the area where they miss out, Peter. They just haven't got a player. Like, uh, Jamison does a reasonable job, McIntyre does a reasonable job at different stages in their matches that they've won, but they haven't had anyone in particular that take the game by the scruff of the neck and kick a bag of goals, and that's what you've got to do to win regularly in this AFL Is Hodges, Gerard, their best bet at full forward? Would you play him there and get him to settle in and settle down there? Well, I'm not particularly sure about that, Peter. I, uh, I believe Hodges has yet to prove himself uh, well, as an NFL footballer. Well, 150 goals in a season. It's not yes, bad. I realise that, but that was in the SANFL. At this level, we've seen a number of players that have risen and a number that haven't. And Hodges, uh, he seems to have problems over there. Uh, there's rumours about him trying to get back to Port Adelaide. He certainly has to uh, make a decision on his career over the summer and work hard to get back. But I was disappointed in McIntyre today. I believe he has got the potential as a uh, tall leading forward and uh, his performance today just wasn't good enough. 
I suppose Hodges probably think, thinks he's lucky stars that he didn't come here, Peter, because uh, I think Jared mentioned there's been a graveyard for a few people out here at the Western Oval, and it really was a struggle, and the struggle has created back in the midfield where the Adelaide players were always put under pressure, kicking the ball into the forward line. So the ball wasn't delivered probably to McIntyre anyway. Exactly. And I think that's the key to Footscray's game on this ground. They're able to bottle sides up in the awkward conditions, whether it's windy, wet, or even today where it's been very, very, like you can see in the background there, the very, very holding conditions, particularly around the centre, and players found it very difficult to break clear. And uh, I think that was Footscray's advantage. They had players like Kellett, uh, Steve McPherson, uh, you mentioned Chris Grant. Wasn't he good at being able to get into the clear and give an effective kick forward to his players up the field? Well, you're talking about players that lift and take hold of the game. It was Chris Grant for mine that uh, did that in the last quarter, and I thought he was the difference in the final analysis between the two sides. Well, the other well, youngster in the first quarter, wasn't it? Uh, Valentine. John Valentine. Yeah, who got Valentine. them going. And they, uh, I think Jared mentioned during the call that they've got plenty to look forward to, the Bulldogs. And what a credit to them because last year they were struggling a bit financially. They've settled that nicely and they look as though they've got some future. All right, well, there it is. A four-goal win to Footscray here at the Western Oval over the Adelaide Crows. And uh, as I said, a learning experience insofar as the Crows concerned here today.